Hello there, and welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Aaron, though some people call me the Pokemon Professor. This world is inhabited by Pokemon, mythical creatures of every different shape, size, and type. Some people keep Pokemon as pets, while others use them for intense battles. In this tabletop adventure, our story focuses on a handful of young trainers who hope to join the Indigo Plateau, the ultimate tournament of the Kanto Pokemon League. What were their names again? Uh, oh, I'm sure I'll remember by the time their stories begin. Their Pokemon legends and adventures are about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventure with Pokemon awaits. Let's go. Welcome to the Indigo League, where trainers grow and bond with their Pokemon to become the very best and prove themselves unbeatable. We are unbeatable. We'll train until we meet our goal. The stakes are high. No, we won't fall because we are unbeatable. Our journey begins on Route 1, the road to Pallet Town. It's a beautiful day, the bright blue sky is dabbled with clouds, and there are singing Pidgeot and shrieking Firo. A cool winter breeze brings the scent of damp leaves and fresh soil. Rattata skitter between sparse fields of grass and up and over rocky ledges around this route. It truly is the perfect day to begin a Pokemon journey. Or it would be if our hero wasn't going to be late. 18-year-old Seth Wake of Cerulean City is on a mission, bounding through Route 1 with all the speed that his body will carry him with. His sandals leaving a spray of dirt in his wake, and on his heavy backpack, a small, blue-scaled Pokemon hangs on for dear life. Seth, what does it look like as you are sprinting down Route 1, trying to get as quickly as you can to Pallet Town? Because you might be late today. <laughs> So, uh, you'll see as I am sprinting with my uh, sandals engaged in sport mode, they're open toe sandals that uh, have kind of like a thicker rope that's tied around that goes to where my feet are, uh, and they're uh, cinched onto the back of my heels so that if they're flipping around, I'll still be able to have stability while running. Uh, but I am wearing some board shorts. Uh, I have a work apron kind of smock tied around it uh, as well, uh, blue blue shorts, uh, a brownish kind of smock uh, on top of that, and then a, uh, a well-packed um, uh, camper's kind of backpack that looks as though it's not necessarily a hand-me-down, but just bought from the same brand that you would normally see a lot of Pokemon Rangers carry, uh, with buoy on top that is my Totodile uh, that is uh, running around with me and holding onto my man bun as if he's uh, piloting me like a little rat in a kitchen, uh, and I am running <laughs> as quickly as I can. You can feel Bowie's claws like digging into that little bit of skin at the top of your neck that your shirt doesn't quite cover. As you hear, Toda, 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 Dial! As this you is are. your fault. You were taking us towards Victory Road, and I don't know why I gave you the Pokey Gear. This is the last time I promise you will never guide us again. Uh, as you look down at the Pokey Gear in your hand, you're probably at this point two generations old Pokey Gear that is cracked in one side, the crystals kind of flowing out of one side of the screen, so it really is faded. <sighs> is that still kind of glitching, and according to those coordinates, you're still all the way back in Viridian City. It, I think it was the, you know, it was the river. I want to say it was the river that usually this, yeah, there is some water still in this thing. <laughs> uh, you know, next year, I won't be so humble, and I will ask for a new, uh, new piece of gear, because this is very old, and I don't think I've changed the battery at all. Uh, how much further is there until we're here? And I'm just going to keep jumping down those little ledges that you normally jump off of to take shortcuts and quick routes. Absolutely. Yeah, you are doing that thing where you're trying to focus on where you're going because if your eyes misalign for a moment, you're going to be tumbling down a hill. Um, most of Route 1 at this point is in fact hills where you're trying to run up the smooth side, side as much as you can and try not to trip down the ledges on either side, which you've already passed a few that are easily 15 to 20 feet tall in places. Um, unclimbable by the standards of normal athletics. Uh, but as you're kind of cresting over this first hill and kind of wondering how long it is till you hit your journey, Pallet Town, the destination of Professor Oak's laboratory and where you need to be by 10 a.m. sharp. As you crest over, you see in the distance where you're supposed to be going. The small burgeoning city that you see before you is far bigger than what you imagine Pallet Town to be. Where 20 years ago, travelers may have seen wide dirt roads and heavily spaced homes, there now stands a shining city. Narrow footpaths divide small skyscrapers and wide parks. Modern white and gray buildings mesh with traditional beige and red homes, giving the place a cultured vibe of past and future. 
From here, you can just barely spot the Pallet Town docks where they connect to Route 21, the winding river that will eventually lead to the sea. And as you get to the top of that hill, you look down and you can see that the main road is maybe a quarter mile in front of you. Um, the main street that leads into Pallet Town itself with its two lane road heading in and out of town and next to it, the footpath that trainers use uh, with a wide paper archway over it. Maybe a figure at the bottom, it's kind of too hard to see right now. But before you, there is a series of ledges that you've been jumping down uh, the previous hills to get through and there is the main road. Main road's probably a bit safer, but also a little slower. What does it look like as Seth makes this decision? Uh, so as I'm running through the uh, through the roads here, uh, as I get up to that splitting path where I can choose to either go down the road or jump down each of these hills, uh, I think I initially start to take the path of the road because I'm thinking, oh, this will be the fastest. I can get there immediately and just start kind of making my way that way. And then I start to kind of meet eyes with one of the other trainers. And I say, not now. And then just jump <laughs> off of the, <laughs> the hills. I, dude, I was just going to challenge. It's the first No, not season. right now. I'm late. I'm late. And nice shorts. Just running down each one. <laughs> Thanks. You can get them from any of the Pokemon. Why are you at? I'm late. <laughs> just keep going. Um, yeah, you are sprinting, running down the road. Are, so are you going to try and turn down the ridge or are you still just going straight down the road? Oh, I'm going down like each of the ridges. Yeah. I'm okay, absolutely. Booking it. Um, go ahead. Uh, first roll of the campaign. Can you make me a fortitude check? Difficulty of... These are some high ledges. I'm going to say difficulty of seven. Boom. Okay, so I'm rolling my fortitude die. Actually, you can make this athletics if you have any skill ranks in athletics. Can I roll a second time? You cannot, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I don't have anything in athletics, uh, but that's going to be a solid three. That's a three. Which is very okay. embarrassing for my diet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 100%. Um, as you are kind of going down the road, it's that motherfucking guy who you look back and you see for a second, he's wearing very nice khaki like cargo shorts with like 18 pockets over them and he seems like he's just one of those shorts enthusiasts that you see around the pokemon uh regions and various games and franchises does. um but as you turn to look you were getting a little too close to one of the ledges and because you were getting ready to jump off of it you hear a cr crack and your foot kind of pushes as the rock breaks underneath you, and you hear da -da -da I, as as Bowie starts to tip over, grabbing onto your backpack and pulling you down as oh you are no. both beginning a free fall tumble. Um, in this split second, you have two choices. You can choose to return Bowie to the ball in that instant, or try and use this moment to steady yourself as you're falling. I am going to... Um, return buoy to the ball. Okay. Uh, and just brace brace for impact. <laughs> yeah. So there's that thing where you reach into that pocket of your apron that is on the front of you where you normally keep buoy's ball, pulling it out, and as you're falling, clicking, and you hear that click <laughs> noise of that red scarlet light appearing and buoy turning to white energy, your snaggletooth totodile being pulled off your shoulder back into his capsule, and then you just hands over the back of your head and neck start to tumble because you choose not chose not to try and steady yourself this is an automatic fail on this roll and you're going to take two minor wounds as you tumble down the side and clip yourself at once luckily this was a shorter ridge it was only about 10 feet but you still feel you've skinned up your knees pretty badly and there's a bigger bruise forming on your forearm Cool. Okay, only how much more left to go? Okay, that's a lot more distance than I thought. Let's maybe take the path this time. How much time is left? <laughs> Can I look to see what time it is? Uh, you look down at your at your uh, Poke Gear and you see that the clock, it's always three hours and 10 minutes ahead. So doing the math, uh, it's 9.15 right now. I'm going, mm, uh, I gotta keep going down this hill. I don't know. I don't know the time. Okay. I'm just going to keep booking it. Yeah. You remember, by the way, in the instructions that were emailed to you from your father, you are supposed to meet one of Professor Gary Oak's aides at the entrance to Pallet Town somewhere around 930 and then make it to Professor Oak Laboratory uh, by 10 a.m. sharp. So 
you look down the hill, you see that there's only two ridges left. And at the bottom, um, there is obviously foot traffic right now, people coming in and out of pallet as the season for the Indigo League has begun today. There are several trainers coming back and forth, but at the base of the hill, you see an individual wearing a white coat who is standing at the archway. You just have to make it to them. There are two ridges left or the road. What are you going to take? I'm going with the ridges. Okay, go ahead and make me one more athletics fortitude check. I believe in myself. Would you believe it's worse? It's a two. Oh, no! <laughs> Ow. Seth is going to so, pass out before he even gets so, there. Um, I have a I'm job gonna, to do. I'm going to save you the narrative embarrassment of rocking down each of these. I think instead of it being like a singular fall like the first time... Can I try and save myself this time because I've, sure. I don't you know have what? the I will allow you to roll about. an agility check to see how well you control your falls. Okay. I was like, this wait a minute. Be, that's my almost my not rules. as difficult because you're still going to be taking wounds, but it might be less. So agility check difficulty five. Six. Six. Okay. So um, you end up still making it fa down faster than you would have if you had run down the road. However... That is not to say that you came out of it unscathed. You're going to go ahead and over the course of the next two ridges, take one minor wound from each. So you just have like a line of blood running down one leg as you have scraped up your knees. You have boggled your arms at this point. Um, but you appear uh, excited, sweaty, out of breath at the base of the hill, looking for the aid that you are supposed to be meeting. Are you Professor Oak's aid? I'm here for the... As you're kind of like pulling yourself up off your knees from where you've landed, um, you see a girl about your age uh, with um, like shoulder length, like lavender purple pink hair uh, with like a pair of round spectacles wearing a, a white uh, a white jacket. And she goes, yeah, are you the uh -huh, reader yep. guy? Okay, a... um, we need to go. We're going to be late. So, uh, yep, here yeah, for it. Um, no, 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 I... I we're going to deal with that when we get to the lab. Or, okay. you, uh, it's, uh, f I just gave away my scarf yesterday. I'm sorry. I don't have anything that I can I use. I don't a scarf. Why would uh, you? Okay. We got to go. I, I just was trying to do something. It uh, is like 920. We got to no, go. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Professor Oak let me one of his Pokemon so we can get back quickly. Just, I need you to step back and clear some space. And she okay. looks at the uh, line of people who are coming in and out of Palatine. She goes, hey, everybody, I'm going to release a Pokemon. Can you back up for just a, just a second? And you see people like kind of like look approach and they, and they kind of back up at this point in time. And as they clear about like a 10 foot circle, that she clicks a small Pokeball off of uh, her belt from underneath her lab coat. And as she clicks it, um, there is a bright red uh, flash of light that is familiar with all Pokeballs. And in that moment, materializing in front of you in a red flash, you see a wide, maybe five foot at the shoulder creature with thick rippling muscle and fur that is orange and black and beige with a massive mane. And it radiates heat as this larger than normal Arcanine appears in front of you. Um, there is not a child in this region who is not familiar with who Professor Gary Oak is and his younger championhood uh, champion days when he was a champion for famously less than an hour. But his team is still very well known and there is that moment of starstruckness when you see this beautiful, uh, like, well-nurtured Arcanine in front of you. This is, I'm lightheaded. Okay, yeah, cool, no, let's no, go. It's okay, it's okay. Right, I'm going to put you up in front to make sure you don't fall off. Is that okay? Roger that. All right. Hi, by the way. Uh, Hello. I'm Poppy. Nice to meet you. Hey, I'm uh, Seth Wake. Very cool. Uh, we're going to get you to the Pokemon, to the Pokemon yep. lab, okay? Uh -huh. uh, yep. do, you have, do you have the Pokeball on you? I yep, it is here. Okay, got it. My friend Saving is waiting stuff. for that, so we need to get it to her as quick as possible. Okay, Roger that, Poppy. All right, let's go. <laughs> Start to kind of get woozy. Yeah, as you're woozy, you're doing that thing where you're doing that like mental thing that you would do for Pokemon, where you're taking stock. You're looking down at your leg. There's a little bit of blood coming out of it. You kind of pull out like a handkerchief from your from your backpack and start to wrap it as you're getting up on top of the Arcanine. And there's a moment where you throw your leg over, and you can just feel the power spring coiled in this creature underneath you um poppy then jumps on her lab coat kind of flaring behind and you see that underneath her lab coat she is wearing like a like she's making it work but it on a normal person would not look good of this like green pink and purple like hawaiian-esque shirt uh with like just these like ratty sketched on jeans underneath um as she hops on behind you and 
uh, she goes, hey, you don't have motion sickness, right? Uh, no, no, I'm not okay. motion sick. I'm just. Um, I find the best when you're writing this for the first time, you just want to head down face in the main and just focus on not throwing up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, you ready? All right. Uh, go for it. Okay, Arcanine. Extreme speed. Come on. As Extreme she calls what? Out, <laughs> as she calls out the name of a very powerful Pokemon move and you feel the wind boom. As for that first second, when Arcanine takes off, it has been known that Arcanine can break the sound barrier. And there is a moment where you hear nothing and then a roar of wind as you... You don't have time to take in the sights of the city around you as your face is just down. Can you please give me another fortitude check? Because oh, so you might those. not have a mystery or a history of... Uh, motion sickness but this is definitely possible on this one that fell uh okay 12 12 okay 12 is great 12 is way better than what most people can accomplish Solid. there is actually a moment as you feel arcanine poof, and you hear the roar of wind as you guys do breach the sound barrier for a second um you actually manage to look up right as you take off and arcanine has leapt 30 feet into the air over four lanes of traffic um, and is just beginning to bound. And you actually get to have a little moment of enjoyment. What does it look like if Seth feels the wind rushing in his face um, and is seeing uh, street after street and road after road and watching passerbyers barely noticing you before you're out of their view in that moment? Uh, I think as that's happening, uh, he does kind of peek out a bit from the, uh, from the main. And when that happens, uh, you kind of just see this light kind of spark up in his eyes because he's been in the air before. He flies uh, and goes in different traveling to different events and stuff like that. And so he's Absolutely. definitely been in the air, but not by the means of this. Uh, normally it's from a flying Pokemon. Uh, so kind of having that moment to like take in being on his own, doing this uh, job for his parents here. He just kind of feels that little bit of a sense of accomplishment of like, I may have gotten a bruise on my arm and I uh, can't feel my leg at the moment, but like, this is pretty sick. I'm happy. Uh, and then just kind of takes in that second. Yeah, there there is something about being on a flying type that is completely different from this, of soaring through the air. Being on an Arcanine while it is bounding is one of the most liberating feelings you've ever felt because on a flying Pokemon, you know that you're on that Pokemon. It feels like you're being carried. On an Arcanine, it almost feels like you're running that distance on your own. Um, but as you and Poppy bound off towards Oak Laboratory. Another one of our heroes is just unloading himself down at the Pallet Town docks. 18-year-old Gavin Newman of Twinleaf Town finds himself working up a bit of a sweat unloading packages and boxes from the small cargo vessel labeled the Whalmer's Blessing. His voyage from across the sea uh, from Sinnoh has just come to an end, and he's more than ready to begin his Pokemon journey. Gavin, you sit down the final crate onto the shore. Um, Captain Nolan has been happily watching you from his folded chair aboard the Whalmer's Blessing. Uh, what are you? What are you doing? What do you look like, first of all? <sighs> so, Gavin is currently pulling back on his uh, his like slate blue hoodie that he took off because he didn't want it to get sweaty. Um, he's throwing back on his backpack. Um, He's like been a, he's been pushing all of these crates off of the docks, and he's been very carefully avoiding stepping off that dock every single time. He's been like reaching across to do it. Um, so yeah, so yes, is that the last one? That should be yeah. the last one, I think. Um, you've done good work, even without renting someone else's Tangrowth. There's no Tangrowths here. Well, they are here. Actually, Tangela's native to the regions around here. I mean, here, here, uh, on this dock. You did good work, though. Well, thank you. It's been... Uh, it was it was eventful. It was real fun. Um, having you for that tentacle attack was something. Your little Starly got to experience a battle for the first time. Ava kicked so much ass. I... Anyway, so I think this is where we part ways, at least for now. Yes, you had mentioned potentially wanting to see Cinnabar or Seafoam Island. I need another crew to come pick up all of this, and I probably won't be heading out to the least tomorrow morning. 
If you end up wanting a ride after you've done your business at the laboratory like you were telling me, you have my cross transceiver information. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. We'll hit you up if... Uh, and if you find yourself stranded, if, uh, I'm always making the route from Sinnoh to Kanto. Awesome. Thank you. He kind of, like, pushes aside his, like, uh, his, like, yellow jacket to put his hands on his hips and, like, offers you a hand. Um, and it's very grizzled, very calloused, very dry and cracked. I've got, I've got like, fresh blisters on my hand. Yup, 100%. You, like, you train, but physical <sighs> labor is kind of outside of what you do. Yeah, I've only got a, I've only got fingerless gloves on one hand, so it's that has to do with trainer and practicalities. Um, also, you you see, he kind of like looks up and back, and um, you remember uh, that today's a very sunny day, but you do catch that there is like darker clouds on the horizon. I think there's a storm brewing. I might batten the hatches and go find myself a hotel room for the night. Awesome. Well, uh. I'll see how I get on. If I can get signed up as a trainer, then I'm probably probably find me in the Pokemon Center. Remember, no battling until you've registered. That's a big deal here in Kanto. Yeah, okay. Good luck to you. Thank you. Because I know there's going to be an important moment for Gavin. Why don't you give us fully everything that is going on with him, his expression, what he looks like as he steps onto Kanto for the first time. See, so yeah, he stops there and he looks out and he looks very pointedly at the ground in front of him. He looks down, he sees his, his shoelace is slightly untied, so he goes down and he ties up the shoelace on these pristine pair of uh, Pokeball edition running shoes. So they look like they're red and white like Pokeballs. Um, he ties it all up. He gets his like his little poke his little poke etch from Jubilife, and he resets the, the step counter. And then he looks out with a determination of a twinkle in his eye. And he takes his first step onto Kanto. And that feeling, even though from a physical standpoint, it feels exactly like stepping anywhere else, there is a shiver of anti anticipation that runs off of your shoulders and up your neck, and you feel the hairs on the back of your head stand up just a little bit. As for the first time, really for the first time, you're on your own in a new place. You've been to other regions. You've seen a lot of really powerful and amazing Pokemon battles. But you were never on your own. You had your father. You had your sister. You had someone. And this journey of yours is just beginning. Now, um, as you step off, you do know that you need to make it to Oak Laboratory. Apparently, the professor, Gary Oak, has offered for you to get your registration done there as it's a bit harder for people from out of region to get their trainer cards here. Are you going to try and head immediately there? Yeah, I'm headed straight to Professor Goke. The sooner I get that trainer, trainer pass, the sooner I can start battling. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah. Do you, are you going to ask somebody or are you going to try and use your cross dress transceiver to uh, navigate there? I mean, I'm just going to do some, uh, just some random like surfer dude coming back in from the, from the, from the sea. I'm gonna go, you there! Hey, what's up, dude? Where's Professor Professor Oak's lab? Oak lab? Well, that's it, like... Well, what you're gonna... You're on, like, the wrong side of town, my guy. You're gonna wanna, like, take that alley. Gonna take it, like, five blocks. You're gonna take a left. You're gonna go up uh, Ketchum Avenue. You're gonna go past the, the Californian uh, directions. You're gonna go <laughs> around, and you're gonna head all the way over up a hill. There's, like, a driveway. Uh... Whenever you get to the hill, though, I don't know if you've got, like, permission or something, but ever since, like, that thing last year, they got, like, a big gate, so you might not want to, you might not want to go unless you got, like, an escort or something. I think I'll be quite fine. Thank you. All right, yeah. So, like, remember, though, don't get, like, don't use your GPS here. It's going to take you to a main road. You want to go down there, like, that walking path. That's, like, totally the better way to go. Right, and with my, with my D20 int, I recite all of those directions back to him. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you recite, he's like... Fresh, homie. That sounds right. That sounds right. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. I just kind of was winging it. Thank you for your help, homie. And then he sprints down. <laughs> sprints. You catch that, like, this guy was coming up off the beach. Um, It is, like, winter in Kanto. For these people, it's very cold. For you, it's like, you know, this is early fall feeling for you. But he is also the only person coming off the beach in a wetsuit. He's, like, fucking with his surfboard just rocking it. Nips that could cut glass. Yeah, probably also not the smartest person in the world. Um, but you rush to that alleyway. Um, and you see that it's not actually an alley. 
Um, something that is very unfamiliar to you because Jubilife was not like this city. Uh, in Jubilife, things are structured in almost a grid system. It's very easy to see where you're supposed to go. You know that Jubilife, all the way, like years back in the Hisui region, it was set up to be organized, gridded. Everything is exactly how it's supposed to go. You need to get from, you know, first and A to 26th and Z. You know exactly how to get there. But getting to Pallet Town, this city is organic in a way that is beautiful. There are trees, there are parks, there are bike paths, but it is also a bit chaotic and confusing. And there are- This is completely nonsensical. It's nonsensical. Yeah, you you turn off of the path at one point, going down where the server guy told you, with your D20 in, you don't even need to roll. Um, your average on that is 10. Uh, but as you're going down, it's like nine-ish in the morning. So you wouldn't expect to run into shady sorts this early in the morning. But as you're walking, you see like, a guy maybe like 20, like a bald head and a leather jacket, kind of like just walking like maybe 10 steps behind you. And you hear him like kind of like falling in sync with you as you're walking. I'm going to... Hmm. <laughs> Can I like... Just do that thing where you casually like... Like look... Try and look at the corner of your eye without making him know you're looking. Okay. Go ahead and... Yeah, go ahead and roll me a, a stealth check. That's your agility die plus any stealth ranks you might have. That's a one. So as you like go to turn around, you just, I just look fully around make fully. eye contact <laughs> with him. Yeah, it is it is full. Like he just looks at you and you look at him and he raises an eyebrow and he goes, What's up, cupcake? And and you hear as he says that, you hear from the front of the path in front of you, you hear two more sets of foot uh, feet, and you and you look behind you. And you see equally upsettingly violent looking individuals uh, around your age, if not a little older, um, stepping into the alleyway. Jubilife had a lot of people like this, but not at 9 a.m. on a fucking Wednesday, you know? Do you guys have better things to be doing? What are you talking about? Oh, so what's that accent? Sound like you're from out of town. Well spotted. Well. So what? Okay, can you be cut to the trace here? I've got places to be. Are you mugging me or not? Mugging such an unkind word. No, we're just waiting. <laughs> Got Ava. I'm cutting my Pokeball. <laughs> As you go to pull out your Pokeball, you remember two things. One, you probably shouldn't be using your Pokeball if you don't if you're not registered yet. Because B, in order for it to be self-defense, they need to hit first. <sighs> <laughs> So you can have Ava clutched in your hand, but you remember both of these facts. You can do with that what you will. Right now, you're all in a dark alley. If they don't tell, you could be fine. What are they gonna do, go to the cops and like, yeah, we were trying to mug him and then he did. <laughs> we were just a law abiding citizens. But as there's that slight hesitation, as you pull Ava out and you see the two, the others go, oh, you got a Pokemon, huh? And then you, hear a fourth set of footprints coming from the front of the alley where the other two came from. You turn uh, and you see an individual uh, dark like uh, like Grimer's Hatred t-shirt, which is an old like metal band um, with like a yellow and black uh, flannel over the top of it, wearing like this like dark beanie with like dark hair and like a like blonde like ring stripe around his head. Um, hey, my mom liked that band. Your mom had good taste. Anyway, boys, what are we doing here? He says, looking at the other three individuals. You guys getting me a present for my last day in town? And the bald guy turns, well, we just figured, you know, we just wanted to, to send you out with a bit of a celebration. Figure maybe pick on some foreigners. I'm touched, thank you. Though, I gotta say, probably not the best idea First of all, police department is two blocks away, Horace. You know that. Yeah, but Jenny's busy these days. What's she going to do about it? Second thing, I just want to have fun on my day off. No need to mess with a tourist. Sorry about that. These guys, eh, they make wrong decisions sometimes. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to mug me. They want to. I'm telling them not to. Oh, God, God damn it. And then I put my Pokeball away. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be so quick to pull out a Pokeball, friends. There are betters around here. 
Um, and as uh, he's sitting there, you note actually something you hadn't seen before. It kind of blends in with his yellow and black flannel. He's actually draped around his shoulders. There is a feline form of a Pokemon um, that has like pitch black fur. Uh, it's very cat-like um, with these um, golden fur rings around its ears, its forehead, its limbs. You see that there's an Umbreon draped across this trainer's uh, shoulders. You probably don't want to mess with any of these boys, because then I'd have to say something about it. But I figure we can all go on our on our ways, and nothing happened here. What do you think? You're, you're pitching this like this is a favor to me. I was just on my way, and your boys are the ones who stepped to me. So if you're saying let's all go our separate ways, then all you have to do is get your get, get Tweedledee and Tweedledum here to go away, and we can all be gone. I'm just making sure you're not running off to Jenny at the first opportunity. I have, like I said, I'm on my way somewhere, okay? I've got places okay. to be. All right. I don't need to be wasting my time Man, filling out guy. police forms. <laughs> you get out of here. No, you, you get out of here. It's my, it's my city. city. You, you what go. the fuck? You no, get out of no, here. No, no, you go. At this point, as you, as you, like, say this, you see that there's, like, a very, like, wide metal piercing on one of his lips that he's just kind of, like, confusedly, like, he, like, bites on a little as he's looking at you, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? It looks like he's legit, he legitimately thinks he's doing you a favor here by stopping these guys from hugging you. You can think that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 100%. And he's offering you a way out. Are you taking I'm, it? Yeah, I'm, I'm walking, like, I'm imagining this, that he's in my, in my way. So I'm just like, I'm going that way. Can you? Okay. Yeah. Wait. Where are you going? Go to the lab. As you say that, expression change. He was kind of confused, kind of like, mm, not really worried about you. And he steps in front of you. What are you going to the lab for? Uh, I, I, you know, I got the sniffles. So, you should head to the Poké Center if you got the sniffles. What are you heading to Oaks Lab for? Now you want to ask me questions? You told me to leave. What is this? I'm, um, it's giving confusion. What? Why the interest? I thought I was going. Yeah. No, yeah, I guess you are. And he seems like he's like shaking himself out of whatever he was thinking about, and he kind of like gestures to the side. Go for it, big guy. Okay. I turn to the guy who was following me to begin with and go, that means you're the little guy, and I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the fuck? Just let him go, Horace. We got better things to do. But Graham, he's kind of being a dick. You were being a dick first, dumbass, and you hear just, like, the smack of, like, hand on back of head as you... Especially as a bald you... head. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you hear that as you, like, continue down the pathway. Eventually, you... See the gym. Um, you were told to turn at the gym, heading all the way down the street. And there is that moment where every gym is recognizable as a gym. First of all, there are massive statues out front and signs that say Pilot Town City Gym. Um, but this gym is a large uh, brown structure that's probably three to four stories tall. Um, and there is a winding road of people. Probably the, the queue is probably like, looping all the way where it does from what you can see a quarter of a mile long of just people waiting <sighs> to challenge the pallet town city gym on the first day. Um, you walk past that line and there's a moment where you're on the sidewalk having like almost like be one foot down on the street, walking past just crowded sidewalks of people sitting. Reclining. I'm not trying to cut in. I just need to get to the other side. Hey, get your own way. You hear I'm like just the trying crowd. to get to the other side. <laughs> then walk on the other side. Pushing through the crowds, you eventually um, make your way down a street. And as you start to walk to the end of that street, you glance up and you see a hill with a white and red building with a windmill sitting on top of it. And as you make eye contact with that building, we are actually going to find ourselves going across the way to another and the final uh, one of our heroes. As all the way on the other side of town, our final hero readies herself for the journey of a lifetime. 18-year-old Corinne Willows is preparing to leave her hometown of Pilot for the first time. After gathering the last of her supplies for her trip, she finds herself lingering in the doorway to her bedroom, eyes glancing over the starting point of her own Pokemon journey. You have your backpack in hand. All of your supplies for getting ready for the morning are packed. And you packed most of your rations and camping gear yesterday. 
So all that's left is to say goodbye to both your home and your mom. All right. What does Corinne Willows look like as she stands in the doorway of her room with just the slightest amount of hesitation? Corinne has both of her hands kind of bracing on the doorframe, just almost trying to drag herself through it and push herself out of it at the same time. <laughs> as, <laughs> Absolutely. as that hesitation is there, her asymmetrical black techno bob is like kind of weaving just slightly. She takes her hiking boot covered foot and places it outside the door and then just like shoves the rest of her body through her own door. There is that moment where your like giant boots are doof, doof, on the floor and you feel like you've taken that first step. There's that momentary rush of like, okay, I've left the room. I leave every morning, but this is the time. But as you feel that like moment of success rushing through you, you hear downstairs, Corey, did you drop something up there? Uh, no, it's no, I, I'm coming to, good morning, mom. <laughs> Good morning, you hear from downstairs. As you walk down the um, the carpeted steps, almost slipping on that third step as you do every Damn time, step. you kind of trip your way down the step and get to the base where you see that your mom, um, already dressed in her own, um, her normal work polo, green pulled over, um, her brown work pants, uh, a little stained in places, but you know that she finds them comfortable. And she's going to need him for her flight today as clutched in one hand is um, her suitcase. <sighs> you almost ready to go? Uh, yeah, I think so. And Corinne like adjusts her black short sleeve crop top and pulls up her cargo pants a little bit and goes, yeah, I think I'm ready. <sighs> I mean, I know you're prepared, but are you ready? Oh, no. Well, yeah, I... I don't know. As your mom looks at you, you see like her, her brown eyes kind of looking down at you. Um, Cause she still has a little bit of that height on you, even though you shot up like a sprout in high school. It's one of those things where you still haven't quite made it there. Um, and as she, as she looks at you, her hair kind of like, or her hand brushes your hair a little. You know, you have a colic right above your ear. I've only been fighting it my whole life, mom. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that you have to go. Every day, I notice something new about you that I love. And she gives you a kiss on the forehead. Thanks, Mom. Are you ready to say bye to the boys? They're coming with me. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Where's Wiggle? Okay. Uh, you hear wag <laughs> from across the room as the swaggiest polywag <laughs> to ever polywag walks into the room just kind of like step in his like flipper tail behind him as uh, his large spiral body is just kind of bouncing into the room. Polly, Polly, wag. <laughs> Don't miss you too, dude. More like swag. There's like a little spit and then just a bubble comes out like a, not bubble like a normal like soap bubble, but bubble as if from like the bubble move <laughs> comes up and just pops right in front of your face as if to say goodbye. Ah, put her there. And Wiggle and I do our secret handshake. <laughs> Your secret handshake where he jumps up, somersaults three times, slap back and forth with the tail on the hand, um, and eventually lands with a wag. I turn around and I look at mom and I say, that's the coolest dude you're ever going to meet. And you're never getting him from me. <sighs> um, oddly, where are you? Um, she calls out. And trepidatiously, you see kind of like just timid leaves pulling over the, the the side near the kitchen where the island is. You see peeking from behind it as oddly the Oddish very quickly like skitters across the floor, eventually getting to behind your mom's leg um, and is just kind of hiding there. Oddly, say goodbye. You're not going to see Corinne for a while. And there's a little bit of pain in your heart as you look over and you see oddly looks over and just... The worst part is he references you more than he normally does, where he gives you kind of like a vague nod and then goes back to being behind your mom's pant leg pant. I don't get into Oddly's space 
but I get closer to mom's legs and I kneel down completely on the floor and I I just kind of say um, I'm gonna miss you oddly um, keep mom safe okay you hear a very quietly muffled Addy from behind the leg I'm sorry buddy and I go ahead and get up as you get up, your mom kind of offers a hand to help you, like, get up from the knee. Because as you put one foot down, even though your space-reduced backpack is always very small, there's the giant bedroll on top of it. There's, like, the fact that you're wearing the new big boots. So there's that moment where you kind of have to, like, oh, pull yourself back up. <sighs> you ready to go, then? Yeah. Remember, whenever you make it to the next town, give me a call. Of course, of course. You have the home number. You have my hotel number. If I'm still working in Celadon by the time you get there, come visit, okay? All right. You're a good kid. I mean, I try. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. You're going to do good things. Thanks. And your mom opens the door for you. I do the same thing where I sit there at the door. And I feel like it takes mom, like, shoving me out. Yeah, she literally says, oh, come on. No, 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 we're we're moving. We're moving. We're not okay, doing okay, this again. Not, not kindergarten okay, okay, all over okay. again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're not spending six hours at the door. I again. feel like I stumble, and then out of the stumble, I just go ahead and I start picking up a jog, and I say, bye, love you. I'll see you later. Bye, Corey. As your mom is the only person on this fucking green earth that calls you that, um, you start to sprint. Um, you have a couple options from your home. Uh, you take, you've taken the route to Oak Lab almost every day since you were 10. Um, so you have a couple of options. Do you want to go your normal, a little bit more scenic route of headed by the Poke Center, you know, or do you want to go the faster route of going through the gym, or do you want to take the even more scenic route and go through the docks? I think the anxious energy is probably gonna make her go past the poker center just for some familiarity like it's another day okay okay as you start jogging there is this feeling of like oh i don't know when i'll be back and you get a little choked up thinking about it but you 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 start to to jog and it's it's that good feeling of jogging where it is a winter morning. It's early in January. The air is cold and it burns in a kind of like cold mucusy way that feels kind of good when you run. Um, and as you're as you're jogging, you do swing by the Poke Center. You see it there. And unsurprisingly, first day of the season, just like always, it is dead fucking empty. <laughs> no one has use of it yet. No one has fought any real battles to speak of. Every No one has traveled to town yet. Everyone is going to be either at the gym or they're going to be at one of the multiple trainer clubs in town, killing time. And there's that moment where you run by and it looks like just kind of looking through the window, you see Nurse Joy. Um, And she, it seems like she was waiting for you and gives you a wave as you you run by. Um, You're still on the opposite side of the street, but you can see her through the glass doors of the Poké Center. Mm -hmm. And you run by, and you begin to run, um, easily making it all the way over to the east side of town, eventually making it to the large hill where a long, recently reconstructed driveway exists with a black gate at the front of it that did not used to be there. Uh, And as you're running, you see that the street is basically dead empty besides another individual, a young man, probably around your age, with dark hair and a blue hoodie, who also seems to be kind of like, he's coming from like a T direction with you and you're both meeting at the, it was almost what it looks like where you're both headed to the same direction. Um, And you, you actually end up managing to make it to the gate first. Cool. Um, You scan your trainer card and the the gate opens for just a second and you step through. Gavin. There is a, there's an individual with uh, this like black techno bob hair that it, full like hiking equipment on crop top and like cargo pants who has just stepped past you uh, and has buzzed into the black gate uh, that sits in front of the Oak laboratory. Can I? Ooh, um, okay. Have they noticed me? It's pretty obvious that they noticed you, but in a way that like a runner no- notices passerbyers, like they've noted that you exist, but haven't like 
haven't stopped for you. When they go through the gate, I'm going to nip in before the gate closes. <laughs> yeah, Corinne, as you step through, having buzzed your security thing, you don't hear the gate immediately close behind you. In fact, you hear open slightly and then it poof. And you look behind you and there's this guy you've never met standing on Oak Lab property. Whoa, 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 whoa. Badge? Whoa. You got your- Sorry? You got your- Hi, good morning. Hello. Never seen you before. I've never seen you before. I- I don't- I don't know how I'm supposed to- Do you have your- What? Do you have your ID? I'm here to see Professor Oak. Okay, with an ID though, because you can't get in here without an ID. I- What kind of ID might I have? Would I have like a Sino learner's permit? <laughs> You have a Sinnoh trainer card. You you have your Sinnoh trainer's card. You you got that as soon as you turned 18. It let you go out and train and battle and buy all of the necessary things that you needed to buy. Yeah, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. And I pull out this, like, it's weirdly, it's different shaped. <laughs> yeah, it's it's this. It's still that same rectangle, but instead of, like, the, like, orange and green palette that, like, all of the Kanto trainer's licenses have, this one's, like, got, like, blue lettering and the photo is, like, a slightly different color. And, like, none of the ID numbers match. It's, like, yours is seven digits, but on this card, there's a nine-digit number. And where are you from? This is... Uh, th this, I'm from Sinnoh. Um, oh. I'm here to get Kanto 1 so that I can start battling. Um, I'm Gavin. Ga <laughs> Gavin? Gavin. Corinne. Neiman. Cautiously, to it's a hand. very <laughs> unsteady handshake on both sides. Uh, okay, um, listen, you're from out of town, clearly. Um, there was this thing, security around here is kind of high, so why don't I escort you? I heard about the boats, yeah, sure, whatever works. Great. And she kind of puts a hand out in front of her to, like, indicate that you go in front. <laughs> I will go in. <laughs> and she walks behind you. Okay. The two of you start to climb the very long driveway to get up the hill. I cannot state how long this driveway is. Um, but as you begin the little bit of a hike that it takes to get up the hill, Seth... <laughs> How's it going? You have, uh, Pallet Town is not small and you were not on the opposite side of town, but you were not close to the laboratory when you set off. Less than maybe 10 minutes later, you feel Arcanines bounding, foom, 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 come to a stop. As you guys have actually left city limits, you guys cut through a large portion of the city, but instead of going directly to the front of the laboratory, which you've seen on lots of articles, everyone knows that driveway, everyone knows that windmill, you guys left city limits and bounded through. You remember your dad talking about massive paddocks as part of the Oak Laboratory. As you guys bound through paddock one, a massive grassland, coming around to the back of the giant red windmill and going in the back way. Um, as it comes to a stop, you hear Arcanine vroom, vroom, fully vroom. just kind of stop. And it's way too smooth, way too subtle. Um, of a of a shift in movement to like really be natural how quickly you picked up speed. Uh, are you okay? You hear Poppy say behind you. Did we are we stopped? Did we Oh, oh yeah, okay, are, we're not is your hearing okay? Can can you hear just fine? What yes, yeah, I can. Uh -huh. yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you know that when you break the sound barrier, if you don't have ear protection on, sometimes some bad stuff can happen? No, I didn't no, I didn't know that. Okay. Did well, I didn't think about it till after I ordered him to use extreme speed, and I had earplugs, but I forgot to to mention that to you. Okay, should I should I be worried then? Or no, 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 no. You can Blood's you can you can still hear today. higher frequencies, right? Yeah. Um. Here, here. Let me play. This. Uh. You see, she like presses a button on a cross She's like, "Can you hear that? You hear nothing? Yeah. 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 I can. Yeah. I can. I'm messing. Mm -hmm. I'm messing with you. I didn't press play. I didn't press <laughs> oh, play. It was a joke. I was messing with, with you. Uh, I. It was, a, it was a joke. Me and my dad play on uh, new trainer sometimes. Uh, you please sure? play the sound, please, uh, just to make sure. Uh, if I. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sh you hear like a high pitch buzzing noise. Okay. I I do hear that. 
you okay hit play okay I watched okay yeah <laughs> all right well so you have the pokeball right yep I showed it again but I okay. put it back in the bag because we broke the sound barrier yeah so. okay so um no 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 it's that's fine Professor Gary's gonna be in um in probably like 15 minutes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to the lab itself uh, it's just inside here. We're going to set the, the ball up. Uh, just make sure scan it. Make sure it's all good because we have to run our own checks before we can hand it over to a new trainer. Um, and then um, your um, your father? Is that the guy in charge? Your, your dad? Uh, yeah, well, my mom yeah. and my dad. Uh, it, it's a, oh, okay. Do the business well, he was, he's the one we had the phone call with. Um, and he, he requested that you be allowed to present the, the, the Pokemon yeah, to the Yeah, there's trainer, a whole so. thing we say when uh, it – yes, yeah. For lack of oh, is it like is it like written down? Do you have like a speech? Uh, no, no, just more of like a – from cornucopia daycare to your care, and then we we hand over to the pokeball. Okay, like, we, we, yeah. can, we can you skip see, it. Like, we don't have there to. Is, we can there's it. that disbelief can, of just like there's no way you say that every a, time on her face. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. Hey, it's, it's no, no. Did, he won't know. I mean, it's, it's fine. hey, you know, no, no, no. It's okay. Uh, anyway, um, we're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna bring you in. Uh, come with me, Arcanine. Return, and uh, sh she says that, and like hits the pokeball, and there's this like. Arcanine. Growl as it. Oh, wait a second. Arcanine, come back out. And it, the Pokeball pops back out. Sorry, he's supposed to head back to Paddock 3 after I was done using him. And I take the Pokeball back and say, Arcanine, you can go. And you can see this very obviously annoyed. Like, again, five foot at the shoulder, seven foot at like the head. Canine, look at her and just kind of. And turn and start to bound off into a field. Thank Does you not for give you keeping me safe glance. while at uh, speeds that were very fast. Goodbye. <laughs> he's already long gone in the horizon at this point. He heard me for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, no, he, I mean, his hearing's pretty good. He can hear up to a mile. So he probably heard you. Um, but uh, no, come on, go ahead and come this way. Oh, cool. Uh, and Poppy, um, she kind of adjusts her coat and kind of like, it seems like she tries to brush her hair, but it's very obviously like she pulls it up into a, like a worker's bun so often that it just is kind of like pinched mm -hmm. in the middle where like she's obviously removed a band many many times yeah um and uh she leads you in to the back door of this massive like from the distance it looks like a quaint rustic building attached to a wind uh, windmill when you get closer you recognize that this is a building that has been redesigned many times it's out its exteriors are like done in rustic colors but the white shiny exterior looks like the most modern and high tech of buildings you can, you think money could probably afford. Looking up, the windmill is not a windmill. It is a high power wind turbine that is meant to collect electricity. You eventually um, make your way up to that back door where you see that this is a metal exterior door, like blue, like what you would see in like schools. Mm -hmm. And there's a keypad and scanner on it. Um, and you see that Poppy walks up and kind of takes a lanyard off her neck, scans it, and then looks over at you and uses her hand to cover the keypad as she types it. Sorry, it's just like, we're not supposed you to share. I could just turn around. That's fine. You're good. No, no, no. no. It's, it's just easy. Here, you don't go ahead and go inside. Okay. And she, and you hear a pneumatic opening of a door as it, and you feel a gust of cold wind just through the doorway towards you. I suppose you don't have an extra coat to lab coat. I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, no. we, we have lab coats. Do you want to borrow a lab coat? Yes. Yes, I would. Yes? Yeah. Okay. 100%. Yeah, I'll take you here. Um, here, I'm going to go put this on the scanner. I'll grab you a lab coat. Come with me real quick. I'll sit you somewhere where you can relax for a second because I'm going to bring you also the first aid kit because I think there's still blood coming out from under your handkerchief. There it, yep, that's, that, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't red. Um, okay. I, oh, also, uh, while I was on my way here, um, I had come across a abandoned, um, nest. I, I don't know what Pokemon egg this is, but I found this egg. Um, do you guys happen to have one of the incubators to check and see, like, Oh is? yeah, we could, I can throw that. Um, it's the same technology. I can actually scan up to six Pokemon at once with the scanner, so I can throw that in with, the. Uh, with the starter uh, oh, sure. ball, if you like, I'll reach down to my uh, belt clip and uh, detach the little egg incubator that has the little cage and uh, shock absorber. One hundred percent. Yeah, egg. it's it's not necessarily the most comfortable thing for most people to carry on their hip. It's just kind of necessary, as the incubator itself is maybe a foot and a half tall uh, and six inches in diameter uh, for the large poke egg that's inside of it. Um, but you see, Poppy scoops that up under one arm and she takes the ball, which you've returned to diminished size, uh, and puts it in her hand. Um, okay, come with me past these. Uh, there's going to be some chairs here. Sit at the desk. 
please do not touch any of the research documents. I have been trying to organize things for like days. Please don't touch any of those. This is my desk. Gotcha covered, Poppy. Okay. As she walks through uh, the, uh, the, the lab, you get your first real look into Oak Laboratory. Your dad keeps stuff up to date, but this is cutting edge. As you walk in and they are um, these beautiful laminate floors that are meant for easy cleanup, easy moving of machinery. There are massive silver and um, gray different pieces of technology and boxes. You walk past several interesting machines that you don't know the function of and several that you do, including things like a trade machine, um, a healing cradle, something like they might use at a uh, at a poker center. Um, you see a weather machine. You see holding tanks for Pokemon that are used while they're studying in an unconscious form. Like, there is the most level of technology. And the room it's in itself is actually, this is a three-story building, and this is the first two stories of the room. As you see that there is a loft area, and the windows are very high. There are no windows at ground level in this building. Um, And uh, as you kind of push, you find yourself sitting at a uh, desk. Um, this desk looks like, it looks very out of place for the room that you're in. Everything else is stainless steel countertops. Um, there's even another desk that is like beautiful, perfect, like scientist research desk with like that weird, like black plastic top over the top of it that you use in like science labs. Um, but as you go to this one, this one is like wooden Ikea desk with like Sharpie sketches on it. Um, on the side of it, there's like a stack of research documents. And on the other side, there's like sewing supplies. You see like threads and pieces of cloth and stuff. Uh, are you doing anything in her desk while she stepped away? Yeah. So I think while I'm sitting at the desk, uh, I'm going to kind of, uh, sit at the, uh, chair. Is it a swivel chair? Uh, It is a swivel chair. Absolutely. There's no way Poppy's ADHD would not let it be a swivel chair. (laughs) Okay, uh, so I'll kind of <laughs> lean back and um, kind of put my knee or my leg over my um, uh, knee just so I have the one that's bleeding kind of elevated a bit. Up? Uh, yeah, yeah, up. Uh, and just kind of look at the uh, the cloth I took around and uh, I'm not going to unwrap it just yet until I have the first. No, aid yeah, kit. it is. It's that thing where like it's like when a Band-Aid where you can see that blood is under the Band-Aid, but it hasn't like seeped through. Mm-hmm. So it's like red in places and it's like you're probably just going to have to yeah, throw I'm it away. Just gonna, after this. Yeah, that's OK. Well. Uh, that's cool. I'll wait for this. Uh, and I'll just kind of like not touching anything on the desk, but just kind of look at what the research is just to see mm-hmm. what's going nope. on in reading material. Not touching anything. What sure is the die <laughs> size of your education? Uh, ba, 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 ba. My education is D12. D12? That's very high. Because it's so high, I will allow you to roll me a poke lore check to understand the um, nomenclature on top of this document. Cool. D12. I'm going to say difficulty five. Okay. It's not the hardest to read, but it's the hardest to understand. Um, I rolled a five and my skill point is in Pokalore, so that'd be six. Six. Okay, yeah, that's going to pass it. So as you glance over the top of it, you don't like reach over it. You don't do anything that you're not supposed to do. But glancing over the top of the document, you see that it's some sort of chart. And it is, oh, it's hard to figure out what this is necessarily in reference to. But it looks like it's about the growth rate of fire types, specifically those that evolve via a firestone. Hmm. Weird. It's interesting. But as you are um, waiting there uh, with one leg over the other, you hear a <laughs> that like pneumatic opening of a door opening again, breaking the air seal in the lab. Um And as the door opens, you look up and see it's actually the other side of the lab that is opened at this time. As you see two individuals uh, walk in, Um, you see one kind of looking like a little out of place, but also like, this is where I'm supposed to be, right? With like dark hair um, and like a a blue hoodie on. And there's another that you don't recognize with uh, like pitch black, like techno bob uh, hair with like full hikers pack on. You actually recognize the branding of her bedroll because it's the same brand as yours, just a different color. Uh, that she has walking in on it. Um, Corinne, for the second time today, there is someone you do not recognize in Oak Laboratory. <laughs> what? So, get, uh, g- uh, uh, one more time. Name? Gavin. So Gavin, Neiman. yes, Gavin. Stay, stay right here. Don't move. Don't move. You, hey, who are you? Well, oh, hey, I, uh, I am Seth. Who are you? 
I am. Are you okay? Oh my god. Uh, yeah. You, no, you see now that, that as as he says, "No, I'm fine." That you see that there's like a handkerchief that's like blood caught on his leg, and there's now just like a steady drip coming oh, off of it. No, I'm oh I'm fine. I'm fine. Did it's you get fine. mugged it's too? The what? You got mugged. mugged. You got this mugged. Epidemic. This is ridiculous. One thing's more. Are, are you okay? I feel like mugging. That's a very important thing. Like, did, or did they? No, they, they didn't do anything. They didn't take anything. I mean, clearly he's anything. fine. He's it not It was an attempt at mugging. Do you have an ID? Oh. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's in my pocket, but I'm. I'm kind of occupied at the moment. I'm waiting for um, uh, Poppy. I think to she's bringing me a first aid kit. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, I'm so see, there's some drops. Uh, sorry, it's not on the paperwork. I promise. But that is interesting research you're doing over there. I uh, I told you not to look at any of that. You said not anyway, to touch. You specified. Sorry. Well, uh, fair enough. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, you see that? Um, you see you, Corinne. See your friend Poppy and Gavin. You see this this uh person walk in with like this like mix of lavender and pink hair, kind of like pinched at the shoulders, spreading out a little bit. Um, large wide frame glasses. Um, with like a funky colored Hawaiian shirt underneath her her like lab coat. Um, and she's clutching like four things in her hands at the top of which is like a plastic red and white uh, first aid kit, um, um, yeah. which uh, Corinne, you you would immediately take the, that off the top. Um, and you see other things she sits down is on her desk. She kind of like slides that stack of research to the side uh, and pops down what looks like a pokeball, an egg incubation chamber um, with an egg fully inside of it uh, and a lab coat. She pops on the desk. Sorry that took so long. The scan, for some reason, was taking longer than normal. I had to, to try and figure out your egg. That's what ended up holding up the oh, process. Oh, uh, sorry. You have an egg? Uh, who are you? Uh, you see that this girl turns to Gavin. This is Gavin. I'm going to start uh, tending my wounds. With I'm me. Gavin. Oh, Newman. Yes, okay. Uh, you're supposed to be here. The professor's not in yet. Uh, I can't really get any of your paperwork started yet. But what I can do is I can collect your documents. Can I have your um, Pokedex and ID, please? And also any Pokemon you have registered yourself currently. Look at Corin. I lower my hands. <laughs> I'll allow uh, I go, in, I go into my here. bag and I get out all my things and I take I, I take uh, Ava off my belt. Could I could I have that first aid kit you're holding? At this point, Corinne, as you're saying that, Corinne has already cracked open the top of it. Bandages and gauze are out as alcohol wipes are already being used to wipe away. You look down, um, and this person who's treating your leg, um, you are familiar with the basics of first aid, Seth, because you work at a breeding facility. You're aware that Pokemon get hurt sometimes, things like that. Whoever this person is who's bandaging your leg has more training than you do, as immediately your leg is clean, uh, for the most part, there's still like smears where she's getting at it with alcohol wipes outside of the bandage itself with a freshly bandaged gauze that has already been sprayed with a bit of potion. Go ahead and regain two minor wounds. Triage! Nice. Does that take away one of the the major I have? That takes, it demotes it? Yeah, so that breaks that major back down to two. Sick. Nice. Moving on up. Oh, wow. Awesome. Hey, I think my mom does stuff like this too. What did you learn to wrap injuries like this? Um, Necessity. Anyway... Uh, this should be good now. You should, there's not going to be any infection or anything. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Um, I'm going to put that lab coat on because I really just wanted the opportunity to. She said I could have one. <laughs> you, you see that this person takes the lab coat and like throws it over an equally ridiculous outfit of like already wearing an apron over a shirt and sh board shorts. Um, Neither of the people wearing lab coats in this room look like they should be wearing lab coats. Corinne kind of gives you an up down, um, stops at the shorts and goes, genuinely, nice shorts. Oh, thanks. You know, the same guy coming into town said the same thing too, but it looked like he was wearing cargo sh shorts. Cargo too. shorts guy. Yeah. He, yeah. It's all these people wearing shorts in January. I like the cold, but. I mean, it, it, it's, it's January. It's like you know like 60 outside you can wear shorts it's not that bad yeah plus i'm from cerulean so i'm usually uh over in the in the pool or you're from you cerulean? Know, not here yeah i'm from cerulean uh i'm over at the uh, uh the daycare corinne this is the guy that's bringing the thing i'm the guy that's bringing the thing. she points at the she <gasps> the points at the pokeball on the desk the, oh that yes yeah that's me that's me yep i'm i'm the guy that's um you can't you, now, to be fair, you can't give it to her yet. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can't. Gary has to be here for all the transfers, Professor Gary. 
but there is a process. He is the guy. It made it. I just did the scan. That breeding facility does great work. That's all I'm going to tell you. I've, I've seen some things on the scan. The facility did a really good job. Um, but uh, now we're just waiting for the professor to get in. He should be getting in. And you hear, as the back door opens once again. Right about now. Uh, really and you see walking into the room through the back um, with a sweeping lab coat over the top of what looks like a very nice dress shirt, a button-up shirt that has kind of been tucked into uh, a pair of jeans with like a thick brown belt. Um, more lithe figure. Um, definitely someone who's in shape but doesn't work out. Um, you see probably around the 5'10 range with um, hair that's kind of swept up into one side. Um, kind of a thicker, short beard. Um, think like Hiccup How to Train Your Dragon 3 beard. <laughs> um, pushing in uh, maybe like his like mid-30s uh, stepping in wearing like functional work boots underneath, underneath that like lower set of jeans. Hey, oh, my lab is full. Professor. Professor. Yes. Hi, Corinne. Oh, are you both? He points at Seth, Newman, and Wake. And he points at Gavin. Uh, no, I'm uh, Wake. I'm Seth Wake. I'm all the way around. Newman. Okay. Uh, he looks around. He says, uh, "Poppy, do you already get all of their things together?" Yeah, Professor. I already have it all. Um, this one's documents are already on the scanner, ready to go. Um, I've already scanned the starter Pokemon, and I've already scanned uh, the egg that um, he brought in to us for check-in. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, well, nice to meet you, kids. Uh, you all seem to be here on the first day of the season. You guys are right on time. And you look down uh, at each of your like cross transceivers where it's hitting blink, 10 a.m. Right when most of you were supposed to be here. Gavin, of course, you were on a more day-based schedule, so you didn't have a time. Everybody else, though, is here exactly when they were supposed to be. Um, so I guess Black we box. should... Nice. Um, it's ten... Uh, there's three no hours time ahead. Drift. It's three hours ahead. All right, it's like... Remember... Is that a poke gear? Yeah, I remember two years ago he, he, when this came out. He, <laughs> he walks over and snatches it up. This is the last model they made after they discontinued these things. Oh, I had one of the original models back when I did my journey against Johto. Oh, wow. I bought a lot of cases for them. So every year when it came to birthday, my parents were like, oh, do you want to get the newer one? But I just, you know, like when you invest a lot in those cases and like the accessories on them, it's, you know, the, it, it's like, it's like 200 poke to upgrade this to a cross transceiver. Oh, uh, yeah. I, it was just, you know, I'm one for, like, the older type of tech. Okay, it's okay, hipster. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, and he sits it back down on the desk. Thanks. So I guess I should just kind of work through these in order. I'm going to go, sorry, boys. I have something, I think, kind of important for somebody who's waited for this for a very long time. So I'm going to work with her stuff first. Uh, and I'll clear stuff with you. First of all, Mr. Wake. That's you, right? Yes, yes, yes. He's, he's, like, he's like, still making sure that that's, like... He hasn't figured out quite yet, even though you've said it. That is me. Seems like this guy is like, is here mentally in the conversation, but is also in his eyes, kind of calculating the next like five or six things he's supposed to be doing today. Um, first of all, it's the first day of the season, so I have a lot of gym uh, gym leaders and gym trainers that I need to talk to today. Getting through your stuff though, um, Corinne, I'm sorry you weren't able to start earlier, but. Obviously, Mr. Wake here has been nice enough to bring you a Pokemon and uh, has requested to be able to present you with this Pokemon. Uh, I guess, uh, Mr. Wake, go ahead and take it away. Yep. Uh, and I'll make the Pokeball its larger size. From the Cornucopia Daycare and Breeding Center to your care, uh, I present you with the uh, Pokemon uh, that you requested. Or that, I guess, Professor, did you request it or was it from her? Here's your Pokemon. You see Corinne's eyes are just so wide and like just staring at the Pokeball the whole time you're talking. And like from the, from our care to your care is just like nodding slowly <laughs> and like <laughs> holds out her hands. <laughs> there you go. And as I, as I set down the Pokeball, it kind of rolls and you'll see on the bottom of the Pokeball uh, that there's a, a sticker of a butterfly that's on there. And I'm like, oh, that's not supposed to be, that's, my, my nibbling put that on there. Um, 
it's it likes butterflies a lot and they thought it would be cute to put on the pokeball i guess and they didn't tell me that they would do that so um you hear like a chuckle from oak so sorry i can take it off no, if you want no, me to no, it's no 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 okay okay wait, wait here you go take it the yours. i love it congratulations thank you uh, thank you corinne as you know this is a pokemon safe facility so you can release it if you want <laughs> corinne like on the verge of hyperventilating. Gavin sat in like a spinny chair, just like, I came here for documents. I feel like I've walked into a really big moment in someone's life. <laughs> Gavin, you are having that moment, especially because you just received Ava like maybe a few months ago. It's one of those things where you just went through this. I feel quite intrusive right now. <laughs> Corinne um, turns and kind of looks at Poppy. This is it? You ready? Yeah. And okay. then she releases. Okay. You, you're you very familiar with a Pokeball already. You've helped care for Pokemon. You've helped research Pokemon. So the moment that you click the button on the front and you feel that little butterfly sticker kind of tickle your finger where it's peeling a little on the back <laughs> and you see the engraved water droplet over the top of the button over the normal Pokeball, you click it and there's that tremor of energy through your hand as it clicks open and just bursts out this beam of red light onto the floor in front of you that begins to solidify into a shape it's a circular shape with small limbs small arms a large round head a mouth that kind of points slightly into almost a beak but is is very much more uh reptilian than it is bird-like and a large like rounded tail off the back of or it's actually this is a tinier sorry spiky tail off the back of it this is a squirtle in front of you um this squirtle looks around squirtle and you see that the eyes begin to wander and they first look up at you corinne and there's like just curiosity and then they look over to seth and you see like like uh recognition register mm. and seth you 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 gave the talk to this pokemon you it knows what's going on and as you give that little like calm thumbs up square to square and looks up at corinne i am going to sit on the ground okay you lower yourself you're still like a few inches above but you look because this thing's maybe a foot tall at this point maybe a little shorter and i say uh hello Squirtle. And I hold out my fist for a fist bump. Uh, your Squirtle looks at it and like puts the hands on either side of it as though it's like you're, it's supposed to be taking something. Squirtle. And just starts to like take your hand as though it's like, it's not sure what it's doing. Oh. The naive nature of this Pokemon very much showing itself immediately. Um. It's a fit. It's a fit. So take your. We didn't fist. lock down greetings uh, too well when training it. Squirtle, squirt. Squ yeah, great, perfect. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as you kind of um shake the hand of this Squirtle, you can feel the tiny fingers, like literally, like maybe this big, um, grabbing onto the sides of like your big, like like your pinky finger and your thumb as you gri as it grips either side and goes Squirtle, squirt. Square to square to square to, and just like keep shaking your hand, like not knowing when to end the greeting. Um, can I? Hi, uh, square to. I don't know what to do with you. You're so cute. Oh my gosh. Square to square. Would you like to stay with me? Square to. <laughs> Green almost passes out. I feel like that was both yeah, that was both in game and out of game. The silent screaming. Uh, uh Poppy stuff sword. Um I have the, the the chart here for the scan on on your squirtle. Um but uh Mr. Wake, you had talked about wanting to 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 maybe show off some of these things. So if if you want to read off the chart or if you just want, I don't know what you guys want to do. Sure. This is, this is, yeah. This I mean, I kind of already did the thing with the intro, but I can, I can take okay. it from here. Sure. I get okay. to put this lab coat to use. Um, I can keep this right. <laughs> is that, is that one of our lab coats? <laughs> you see like Oak looks over at, at, at Poppy. He's borrowing it. Cause he was doing the perfect. No, I like it. It looks good on him. He's 
You got good. You got good shoulders. Thanks. It's good for the lab coat. It's from yeah. swimming. Um, okay, yeah. so with uh, this Squirtle here, uh, we have uh, a couple of cool abilities that it can uh, use here. Uh, normally, it has the ability of Torrent, like most water Pokemon do, where if it is uh, low on its power, it's able to uh, get a little bit extra damage out. Uh, not tested though, obviously, with it being it's uh, so immature. Um, but it also has the ability for Water Gun, uh, Tackle, and Tail Whip. Uh, and I forgot one other, oh yes, uh, with one of its, uh, parent, uh, Pokemon here, it happened to get the ability of water spout, um, which you should, <laughs> as you say, water spout, Oak was taking a drink of his coffee off of the thing, fully spit to, <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, water spout. We're again, cornucopia breeding. No way. Cause if, if no, 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 because if it had water spout, its parent would have to be. All right. And it just like, he, he just like, takes <laughs> I think I make like, eye contact with, with Oak when I say that. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but regardless, um, at Cornucopia Daycare, uh, we do our utmost to make sure you can get the utmost out of your Pokemon. Uh, so just be careful with using that. That's a very like strong, uh, attack. And so it may, uh, take it a, a lot out of it to do so, but use, do with that information what you will. Um, but it's it's cool. It's really cool when it does it. So, Squirtle. Wow, so you're pretty rad, huh? Corinne is looking at Squirtle. Squirtle, squirt. <laughs> <laughs> Just dab. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you're admiring your new Pokemon, Gavin, um, you see that Professor Oak had stepped away after the comment about the lineage of this uh, Squirtle uh, and has stepped over to a machine and goes, uh, Mr. Newman, can I see you for a second? Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gavin's been, Gavin yeah. was like, as soon as he learned what the squirt could do, he was waiting to see if it would do it. Uh. <laughs> in a laboratory? Yeah. <laughs> that would wreck Surrounded by everything so in this technology. lab. Um, yeah, you walk over and you see that there is this like photocopier looking device um, that has like a large computer monitor built above it. So you uh, scored very well on your tests, obviously. I offered you the ability to get a trainer card here, but some important information that we want to go down. Um, you are challenging the Kanto League, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and let's see, your ID number is going to be this, and he shows you like a new seven-digit number that's different than the nine-digit that you've already memorized for your Sinnoh ID. Cool. Um, don't lose this ID. It's going to take a couple months to replace. And if you're ever not having it on you, you cannot battle. Cool. Okay. So um, with this. Is that like a digital version I can put on my Poketch? Uh, no, but do you have a Pokedex? I'm sorry, Professor Dawn didn't. Uh... That's, I mean, that's fine. You you obviously would have had a different Dex based off of it. I was going to ask if I needed to upload our Dex to yours. Um, but what I can do is. He kind of lowers his, vi uh, his voice as the other three are still focusing on the Squirtle, talking about its uh, abilities and things like that. You see his eyes glance over at Poppy for a second, uh, who you met just briefly. And he goes, we have a few less trainers than we were planning on having this year. So I have some leftover Pokedexes that I can I can send one your way. Um, but uh, I just needed to make sure that I was getting all of your documents right. With that, and you hear a <coughs> and a like plastic slot <coughs> pops out. And Han off the presses, and he hands it over to you. Thank you very much. You see much. that there is a now orange and green trainer card with your face on it. Same photo you took for your Sinnoh card, um, but it's now been moved over. You see that it uh, currently has a zero on the... There's essentially like a level of like punch holes that you can punch in, and like zero of them are punched for your number of badges. So, welcome to the Kanto League. Thank you. Is there a reason that you chose this league over Sinnoh? I know that you were looking, but I haven't actually had a chance to speak with you since I offered to sponsor you. Uh, well, I'm, you know, uh, well, my sister's doing the Sinnoh league right now. Um, and I just, you know, we didn't, didn't want that to be awkward. Um, well, if that's, if that's your reasoning, you know. We all have reasons to go to different regions. After I challenged Kanto for the first time, a friend of mine went, ended up going one way and I went another. And I actually ended up seeing Hoenn for the whole second year of my adventure. So you can see a lot of cool things in new cultures. Um, 
I suggest you find some locals to travel with you. And he kind of like gestures to the other two. Uh, that might be helpful. Actually, for tonight, uh, you hear a ding, ding, ding. And he looks over at a piece of machinery. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. I don't think you guys should set out today. If, if you are going to set out, uh, there's a storm on the horizon, I think. Looks a little rough. I wouldn't want to be out on the routes tonight. Thanks for the tip. Yeah. Um, but uh, I can have Corinne uh, take you to the Poké Center. At the very least, you'll be able to get some free lodging there for tonight. Uh, I might have young Mr. Wake tag along with you. I don't know what his plans are. Uh, as far as I'm aware, he's just made it in from Cerulean this morning. But here's your trainer card. Uh, here's a, and he kind of like reaches down underneath the desk, pops a drawer and pulls out a bright blue Pokedex. This should work. Um, this is uh, this gen. It's updated with everything that we know about it. And if you want to update it again further, any docking station at a Poké Center will be able to update the information since these became standard issue. Awesome. He takes that too. <laughs> you know, kid, I, I'm kind of doing you a big favor here. You don't have to. You don't have to be so stiff and formal. So I, I apologize. I just um, just a just a big day. Uh, I I yeah, four days on a ship. Uh, thank you very much. Um, wait, you didn't just fly here? It would have been taken like twelve hours. It would have done. Uh. A little bit out of pocket right now. Um, no, oh, that makes sense. Uh, if you want, oh well, then you want me to set you up for the trainers fund? The who? Here, give me that back. Give me that back. <laughs> Gives it back. <laughs> uh, he takes your card from you and he swipes it on the side of the machine, and you see your profile <laughs> immediately pops up. Um, and he starts to type into it, and you can see added to your file uh, it says Pokemon Trainer Fund sponsor Gary Oak. Um, and as, uh, you get signed up for it, um, like certain other people are already aware of this. Seth is already sponsored via his father. Corinne has already been sponsored by Professor Oak himself as well. Um, at the beginning of each month, trainers with a low balance are immediately transferred 500 poke to help with their travels, help with their items, make sure that they have enough to be on the road so that there's less of an epidemic of trainers starving on the road. Um, Incredible. but, uh. That should uh, come in next week if you need any more help with your travel. Oh, that's that's not necessary. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, Champion Red set it up after uh, he, ch- he upped the age from 10 to 18. He wanted people to be prepared before going out into the wilds. <sighs> Arceus knows we've seen enough things in our day. Red. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go. I am very busy. Go ahead and tell Poppy and Corinne that I'm just popping out the back door. Uh, and you see, like, it seems like he's kind of creeping out the back as to not be noticed by Poppy and Corinne for some reason. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go back to the uh, <laughs> to the lab that we were in. Uh, okay, uh, you you kind of like go through that open doorway once again, and the three of them are there. Um, Corinne, at this point in time, your Squirtle is just like putty in your hands and is just like letting you pick it up by the shell. Squirtle. You are the coolest thing. Oh my gosh. And has anybody ever told you that you are super freaking cute? Squirtle, squirt. Oh, adorable. Wait, 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 wait. Can you wink? Squirtle. Ah! <laughs> Um, as you're kind of giggling, um, you've been updated on all of the information on your Squirtle now. Um, female, naive nature, you know, its weaknesses, its resistances. Uh, obviously you were told earlier that it had the Torrens ability and the water spout move. Um, and all of that information is readily available on your, uh, X transceiver as soon as the Pokeball was registered to you. So question for you, how do we feel about the name Aqua? Squirtle. No, not so much. What about, what Squirtle. about like, um, oh, I don't know. Do you, do you have any ideas? She's looking at Poppy and, um, Seth. I mean, like, I don't know. I, I, I uh, Janine, that's a cool name. Okay. Janine, how do we feel? Squirtle. No, no that's a solid no. That's a solid. Uh, I you? know my nibbling, uh, was joking around and making things rhyme with Squirtle. Have you thought of anything like that? Squirtle. Squirtle. Flirtle. Birdle. Wait, where the heck did Professor... Turtle? Hey, um, new guy. 
Uh, where did Professor Oak oh, go? Oh, new guy, new yeah, guy. Yeah, the, uh, he, he had to, he said he had to go do a, a something. He, he left? He left. He has, like, six meetings today. And you let him leave? Yeah, he, like, Scooby-Doo snuck out the back. Poppy, oh how my. is he supposed to know? And as, as you are, like, talking about that, you feel, like, a vibration through the floor, like, a poof. Like, those of you who aren't familiar with the feeling, like, earthquake? Uh, and then Poppy goes, and there goes Dragonite. That means he's left for the day. <sighs> All right. Well, then I'll see you later because I now have to go do work. Oh, I'm Corinne? so sorry. She takes you by the hands. I don't know if you're heading out today today. You're going to have such a good time on your journey. I got to go. Okay. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you too. And she like throws her arms around you and gives you a big hug and like pulls out of it. And she immediately scampers off to another laboratory. You still got my stolly? Uh, as you said, as you say, she goes, check the table on the left. And you, like, look around for a minute and you don't see a fucking table anywhere. And then eventually you see, like, what looks like a clear fume hood with, like, a Pokeball underneath it. What's the... <laughs> Dust it off. <laughs> and now the three of you stand alone in an office of a lab. Can I look around for paperwork regarding that egg? Oh, yeah, because no one ever got back no to you No one got back that. to me on that. You walk you over to egg? the scanning machine... Uh, so the egg you had already picked up, um, you're aware that you can either check the scanning machine for a full list of information, or the incubator will now have an imprint of the of the egg information on the inside. Uh, I'll just go off of the um, the incubator, just because I'm more familiar with okay. those. Um, popping open the incubator. Now this is this is a, a kind of a, a, a an iffy tradition amongst breeders who find mystery eggs. Do you want to know the type and health, or do you also want to know the species? Um, you can, they're separate buttons to click them. Uh, let's go type and health. Okay, type and health. It is a flying and normal type. It is healthy and roughly, it says, the, the thing says anywhere between 12 to 15 days between, for, b before hatching. Oh, cool. Awesome. And I'll just hook that back onto my bag. Um, okay. And uh, cool. That'll be a fun surprise to take home. Uh, so what do you guys have going on for the rest of the day? Because I don't think uh, I can make it back through the forest with all that storm. I, it was a storm they said was happening or something. They make it seem like yeah, you heard the down. off word of like Oak saying something about a storm, but you were paying attention to the squirtle. At the yeah, time. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but I don't know. I don't really have much else. As they say, day. storm, Corinne, that procs something in your brain that doesn't make sense. You've been planning for this day for like a week. The forecast yeah. has been sunny for like a week straight. That's what I thought. When I sailed in, there was, like, some really nasty clouds headed this way. From which direction? Uh, from which direction? Would have been from the south. From the south. It would have been from the south. From the south? Yeah. From the ocean. Yeah, from, coming from, sailed from in. the ocean. Yeah, I sailed in um, from Seno. It was four days uh, with this with this dude. Um, okay. Well, I don't understand why there's a... Is it not Maybe. supposed to be raining? No, I will check the I forecast, check but this Poke Gear didn't have that feature. I've been planning for this day for weeks. So I've been checking the weather. There wasn't any projected storm. Okay, well. That means I gotta wait? I already told everybody goodbye. Oh. I mean, wait for what? Okay. I mean, were you leaving? To go. To go where? What was going on? On. Um, to go on the road to start collecting badges and stuff. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Gavin, you had something to say that you wanted to ask about? Professor, um, I've done a little bit of reading up on the legendary um, uh, birds of this region. Would I know if that might be a cause of a storm? Uh, roll me a Pokalore check. I'm not good at those, though. Uh, this is, this is, that's exactly what that stat is for, though, is for remembering things about Pokemon. Um, okay, that is a five plus nothing. A five? It's in the cards, but, like, random storms happen all the time because of Pokemon. Whether or not it was a legend that caused this storm, you've not been in the storm yet. You don't know how bad it is. Um, because, like, one of the things you really feared getting over here that Nolan talked to you about was Gyarados Dragon Rage causing storms. Um, so that's a possibility. I mean... 
you guys are a little bit far uh, west to for it to have been like Articuno, which would or Zapdos, which would cause the storms. Because Zapdos, you have no idea where they'd be. But with no one having talked about Articuno potentially being on sea foam, you're too far west for that. Okay. Well, so you're gonna do the whole training thing and just get all the badges. Yeah. Cool. Get all the badges. Respect. You're it. doing well, the hey. league too. Oh, you're doing it I mean, also. Yeah. Neat. That's a coincidence. Well, hey, you guys will probably uh, run into my dad at some point. Uh, he's the gym leader over at uh, Cerulean. It's been wake. Yeah, Corinne, you see, has an immediate look of like just like shock and excitement. Is that good? Your dad, yes, is Finn, the Cerulean gym leader. Mm hmm. Yeah. Shut up right now. Finn Wake. Talking. No, I no, no, I don't actually shut up. Okay, oh yeah. my god. Is he a water type trainer by any chance? Yeah, yeah, that's um when Oh, you're not from here. I forget. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, uh bit, bit of backstory. Uh with the Cerulean gym back whenever uh, uh Red was going to to uh, compete, uh Misty was the gym leader, uh and then Misty had uh, advanced on to become a part of the Elite 4. Uh, and when that happened, uh, we came over and uh, were able to take over the, the uh, we, we had a, uh, so my mom's a poke, this is too much information. Anyway, so we no, it's great. run the, uh, the gym, we took it over once Misty left. Uh, and then uh, my parents also run the breeding facility, but we have it attached to the gym. Uh, so that's kind of like the, the back end of the house. Uh, but it's really cool. Um, sometimes uh, we get to uh, flood out the uh, the whole gym and have like a really cool pool party and stuff every now and then, but they really only do like once a year. It's when before cleaning because we have to clean it anyway. The cool, basically, what you're saying is his family is in charge of creating the coolest fucking gym concept I've ever heard in my entire life. You gym and breathe and take. Uh, I just love everything about that. Everything it stands for. Your family, your dad. Wow. Appreciate it. That's nice to say. Well, I can't wait to fight him. Um, yeah. Oh, it's tough. Um, not gonna lie. Uh, not an easy, not an easy go. Uh, but who knows? Uh, I'll probably uh, run into you guys there when uh, you make your way. I don't know what what direction are you guys going. Uh, well. Oh, I. You know, I guess I don't recommend any of these gyms here uh, uh, or in Viridian. Uh, first start of the campaign uh, of doing the whole thing everybody tries to go to those gyms and it's just packed so i never yeah, I passed it by the uh, I passed by the the queue for the one here don't even try yeah it's too long and it's ridiculous yeah, i'm pretty sure if it's going the way it is now and it's only this far in the day a lot of those people are gonna get rained on so better to just dodge it and not have to worry about it and maybe well take another path or just go straight through i've got to hook up with a with a with a ship captain uh, that can take us to Cinnabar and, and Seafoam in return for Oh, yeah. Oh, your work. That's cool. That would be on the ocean. Cinnabar? Cinnabar? <laughs> um, I mean, Seafoam, that'd be cool. Cinnabar's a gym. Ah. Uh, what are you worried about? I don't know if that's like a beginner friendly gym. You know what I mean? Uh, you totally have the type advantage. You have a Squirtle. Yeah, but. You're going to look at me and tell me that that Squirtle isn't strong enough to take down any Pokemon that's at Cinnabar? First of all, I would never say that. Also, and... It feels like it's what you're implying. Squirtle. <laughs> I mean... Squirtle. You see that the Squirtle has gotten very bored and is now just like on its shell, slowly spinning itself on the floor. Oh, I'm, like that's Gavin was doing, I Or like given, Seth was doing on the Should have given her someone chair. to play with and I'll reach into my bag and pull out a um, uh, uh, buoy and I'll pop buoy out. Yeah. And be like, uh, yeah. go oh. play. Um, oh, this is... Uh, Ooh. I need I need poke lore checks from both uh from both Corinne and from Gavin. Corinne, your difficulty is three. Gavin, your difficulty is six. Easy, easy, nope. easy, easy. Eight. Eight. Okay. And then no from you, Gavin. Um, Gavin, you do not recognize the Pokemon that appears, and that's kind of one of the reasons you came here because you knew you wouldn't recognize them. Wait, hang on. Hold on. I get out my Pokedex. I scan it. Yeah, we'll get you there in a second. But on first impression. There is a blue crocodile-esque uh, creature that stands on its hind legs with, like, red spines going down its back. And a, it seems like normally what would be an, a symmetrical face, there's an asymmetrical snaggle tooth that just kind of sticks out of one side longer than what would be on most of these species. 
Um, yeah. Uh, as you go to pull out your Pokedex, uh, you immediately get this like ding. Totodile, the big jaw Pokemon. You have a Totodile. Hi. Yeah, this is Bowie. Uh, my parents got him for me uh, for my birthday uh, a while back, and uh, it was cool. Uh, we were actually Totodile. so my parents were doing some breeding for Pokemon in Johto, and I really liked this Pokemon a lot. And uh, we had extra that were left over uh, that they didn't really want to take. Uh, and so I was like, oh, we became best friends. Uh, and also he bit me and one of his little baby teeth came out. So I have it on a necklace. We're best friends. Yeah. And he holds up just like a tiny little, like what looks like a shark tooth, but it's like tiny. <laughs> like a little, little shark tooth. <laughs> it's well-developed jaws are powerful and capable of crushing anything. Even it's trying to be careful. I look around for something like nigh and indestructible. Oh no! I'm just, oh, there's like a metal I'm just gonna reach my arm out, mess. and Bowie's gonna jump up and grab my arm. Yeah, I'm just like I like good. Yeah, I grab like a metal stapler. I'm just like, yeah. You see that <laughs> as you go back there, the totodile is hanging from Seth's arm, and it looks like it's hanging with enough strength to hold itself, but not enough to puncture skin. As it seems like the bond between this Pokemon and trainer is very strong, um, as uh, they've known each other for quite a while. Okay, uh, you can let go now, Bowie, and go play. Arr. No, stop. <laughs> Pop him on the nose. Stop. <laughs> Does it like, bite the stapler? As you are, as as it drops, it kind of looks up at the stapler and just like, what are you doing? Aisle. Why are you giving him a stapler? Yeah, both of them just give you <laughs> blank looks. I don't, the Pokedex in says it'll bite anything. Moment, in that moment of silence between you asking about the stapler and the Totodile, Corinne, you would pick up a in the distance. And would note that you can hear the sound of the wind turbine upstairs kicking on. Looking up through one of the second floor windows absentmindedly, you can see that storm clouds are already started to appear. If you're going to head anywhere that's not the lab, you need to go soon. Hey, uh, I hate to break this up. Bowie is so dang cute. Thank you. I don't know why you would hand him a... St- Actually, no, I totally get I it. I know, totally know why you would hand him a stapler, but... Um, Pokedex can say something, but if you actually like spend time with the Pokemon, you'll know they when they say everything, it's more of like they're just kind of making it sound cool for the Pokedex. It's okay. never 100%. We got to go. Uh, we got to go if we're going. So this storm seems rough. Let's go ahead and head to the Poke Center. Okay. Yeah. It, there wasn't uh, anything else you guys needed to get from here. I'm assuming they're going to let me keep this. Cl- uh, lab coat i mean they if left they you with it back i can send it back but until then i'll just say it was payment for a job well done um but yeah i i plan to stay at the pokemon center anyway for the night anyway before i head back home uh so we can head there all together if you want okay well let's walk and talk then you're going home you're not going on the circuit yeah no i was i came here to drop off the drop off squirtle that was my job and I'm just going to go back home and work oh. more. Well, and... you... maybe if we head that way, we can join you. We can join you and we can we can go as far as you can go as far as Cerulean, Cerulean with us. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, weren't you going to go to Seafoam or? Well, we hadn't decided. I, mean, I, uh... I guess. I mean, I didn't really have any are, other plans. We are, you know, teaming up. We should Walk go. and talk. Walk and talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah do we need to lock in? <laughs> How does this work? <laughs> okay. Corinne is easily enough able to show you that all of the doors in this facility are very heavy and auto lock anytime you walk through them, which makes it a pain in the ass if you forget your security key inside. Um, but Corinne pushes through the door and the two of you follow and immediately you are buffeted by winds. Um, may I please have a strength athletics check, please? Not a fortitude athletics check. Sorry about that. We had a bit of a tech error and we're now back into the episode. So, stepping out of the Pokemon lab, I had had each of you roll a strength athletics check so that you could tell me how well you resisted the very strong winds coming off the sea to the south. It's um, strength, wh- it's not fortitude? No, I asked specifically for a strength one on this one. Oh. Can I return Bowie? Uh, yes, you may absolutely return Bowie. Oh, oh <laughs> good as that. Having my fortitude die to roll. It's only me. <laughs> Nope, no fortitude on this one. This one is actively strength-based. I feel like one of you is having a much easier time than the other two based on how character creation decisions were done. Uh, uh, do you want? So you know how there's only four possible results I could have had? Yeah, exactly. 
That's What's it. the worst one that I could have done? Oh. A four, and then explode that into another four, and then explode that into another four. That would be the worst I for me. I said, what's the worst? Okay. I said, that's I the worst for me. one. Yeah. Okay. I got three. And then, uh, you got a three, and then what did Corinne roll? 18. Oh, yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. This is <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> that sounds about right when you max out your strength and character creation. You just wait until I have to use my brain. So, as you guys step out, um, it is not a second too soon that you click the button of your Pokeball, Seth, and uh, Bowie gets sucked into it immediately with a confused Dota dial. As at that exact moment, there's a shaking of wind, and the door that had been pushed open slightly to let you all out doof, slams itself all the way open as the wind catches it. It opens outwards. Um, and as you guys watch, you see now that those dark storm clouds you saw maybe an hour and a half ago um, are now dark and roiling and almost directly above the city. The sun is still over most of the city, um, but you can see almost like a storm wall of just wind coming across and rippling across the river. Corinne, even in winter, this is probably not a natural storm. You're, you're not unfamiliar with um, Pokemon created storms. You're technically in a semi-coastal city. Occasionally people spook Gyarados and stuff like this happens, but this is like hardcore. I thought Kanto was supposed to have better weather than Sinnoh. At that moment, both Seth and uh, and Gavin immediately start to tilt as the wind catches a lab coat and a hoodie and just starts to pull them out of the building and off course. Um, Corinne, you just in time are able to tuck. Um, you're able to tuck your Squirtle under your arm, yet unnamed. You have one extra hand. Who are you grabbing? What? I have to choose? <laughs> They're both in arm's Ooh, reach. Wisely. To be fair, he gave you your Pokemon. I will understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I know he has a Totodile. And I'm injured. <laughs> And you're injured. Who? Okay, just gauging off of what I saw of them, who do I think is going to be stronger? Uh, <laughs> well, Emotionally how do I or tell you this? So, um, as someone who has seen both of their character sheets, you see a noodle arms all around the party. Did you head. both dump strength? I swear it's to God. It's a swimmer's body. <laughs> my chest is built like a spoon. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have a swimmer's body. Um... I did not make a himbo for a change. I have, my, I have my backpack on, right? Uh, yeah, you have your backpack on. Is it possible for me to tell my Squirtle to climb into my backpack? It is a very young baby. Um, probably not. Okay. At this point in time, Squirtle is just kind of hugging on for dear life. This is a split second choice, and if you don't choose either soon, you're choosing neither. Can I climb ah! in my backpack? I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> shout. I'm gonna shout. Um, I'm gonna shout. Grab him! And I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna grab Gavin and hope that. Um, oh no! And this hope is this that... is pack rules. Matt is already injured, therefore he needs to be left behind. Oh no! <laughs> what am okay. I rolling to grab Seth? So and hope that Seth grabs on. Uh, with your check, I'm gonna say you're automatically successful on this. Um, Gavin. Because you are in the wind, this is this is gonna t go with a penalty. So you're rolling a d4 for your oh athletics God. check, but you're also <laughs> rolling a d4 penalty. Athletics is fortitude it's just as well as this. as well as strength. I'll allow fortitude on this one. The first one was strength, but this one I will allow fortitude. Okay. Yeah, but you're also rolling a d4 penalty on this one. Do I roll anything as a reaction to this, or am I just living nope. my life? I'm fine with it. No one helped you here. It's, it's a total of a five with a nine minus four. Okay, five's not bad. Five's not bad. Five's, honestly, five is fine in this game. Fine is the difficulty class of a lot of things. So, as you reach out, your hand grabs, and you feel nothing but air for a moment, and then just cotton, as you are only succeeded... Um, by the lab coat. The lab coat is the only thing that saves Seth's life. <laughs> as you grab the lab reason. coat. And oh, Seth, thank you. you can't think. God, you kept that on. <laughs> your lab, your um, leg is still injured, and you felt it go out underneath you with the wind. As you get pulled up, you three manage to recover each other. And if you're headed to the Poké Center, you need to go now. Okay. 
We should head Running. to the Poco Center now, I think, more than anything. Is Corin flying us like a kite? <laughs> all the way back, just all the way to the Poco just Center. Just muscles. <laughs> um, no, the three of you moving in tandem can move easily enough. It was the wind being unexpected at the strength that it's at. If Oof. you're walking slowly and carefully together, you can make it with no difficulty. Okie okay. doke. With the weather kind of being against us as we travel, can I use tracking to find the best route? Um, yeah, especially because you guys are up on top of a hill. Uh, it's easy enough to look down. And with Corinne being there to assist you already, yeah, 100%. Go ahead and roll me a tracking roll, and we'll see if you can easily make it to the Poké Center. Uh, boom, 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 boom. That's going to be five. With a five, yeah, you can easily make it enough. Again, five is the difficulty for a lot of things. So, as you um, begin to step down the hill, the three of you moving in tandem, uh, Corinne, you're familiar with the streets, but honestly, your attention is more focused on a hand on the back of either of the two clutching your squirtle in your elbow. Mm -hmm. uh, at, as Seth is kind of, you're letting Seth take the lead. You obviously have to tell Seth where the Poké Center is. You have to point it out across the city. But with your advice and Seth's natural reading of the wind, you are able to find a quick enough path. One of the things to note, you do manage to see the gym down the street as you're walking. Um, Gavin, there is no one outside of that gym anymore. They are either all piled in or have abandoned to somewhere else. We could um, totally go to the gym. <laughs> um, no. Eventually, no, though. No. It's a ruse. It's a ruse. You figure out that because of the nature of the Oak Lab, you guys actually found out about the storm after most people, because most people could hear the wind going. They could see doors beginning to fly open. Oak Lab being as sturdy as it is, having just been rebuilt, you guys didn't notice it until it was a lot later than a lot of other people. So you're the only people on the streets. But over the course of the next, like, 20 minutes, you guys can pop across the street, eventually making your way to a giant red and white building with a domed roof on the front that opens up into a much bigger, almost, like, hotel-esque building behind it. Um you see that there are, is a pair of glass doors with a metal rod shoved between them. But as you have begin to approach, you see motion behind the desk as um, a pink-haired uh, woman with a white smock um, and white uh, accoutrement-like outfit begins to move towards the front, and you hear the door, and it poof, immediately slams open. She catches it right before the glass slams into the wall. She goes, come in, come in, come in, please, everybody, in, in, in. I All of you recognize, and the <laughs> yeah, you both get pushed in, um, the wind carrying you a few steps. Um, Seth, you actually, like, catch air for a second and then land it. Um, but you all recognize a member of the Joys. They are a family of doctors who essentially run basically every poker center across the world. As the doors are struggling to close, Corinne, you reach over, grabbing the door, and between you and Nurse Joy, you can easily, oof, and then put the metal rod, locking the doors back together. Nurse Joy is stronger than me. You feel the wind begin to whoa, 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 the windows slightly, and Nurse Joy goes, um, why don't we all go a little bit farther in before we settle down for a second? I'm worried about the integrity of some of these doors. Before we step away from the windows, can I look up and directly... How close are the clouds? So as you look, the clouds are just cresting over the top of you guys at this point in time. So you can still see the sunny sky and you actually feel the sunlight disappear from your face as the clouds pass over and you see heavy winds carrying leaves and branches. And then there is a <laughs> burst of wind across the glass as you guys realize that you missed some of the worst of it getting in in the time that you did with that successful check. Um, the dark clouds almost look like they're boiling above you, moving and shaking. Um, what are you wanting to know about the clouds specifically? Uh, can I use my uh, polka lore to think of what on earth could, because I feel like this is not a natural phenomenon. You are already, uh, with some checks you guys made earlier, you're already very aware that this probably is not natural and any number of very powerful Pokemon could cause an effect like this to happen. The thing is Pokemon are these mysterious forces of nature that regularly mess with the weather. Sunny Day and Rain Dance are low, low, low power abilities. Something that can cause a hurricane, that's a little bit higher, but it's it's not the it's not unheard of. Any sufficiently leveled Gyarados, Dragonite, or anything of the kind could cause this. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um you guys find yourselves now in still wind in this like white um, linoleum tiled 
front reception area where there is a very familiar half dome or like half circle semicircle desk in front of a back wall with a door leading back and on other side either side of that there are hallways that reach out into branches of the building ah uh, corinne it's good to see that you made it in nurse joy says and you hear chancy from behind the counter as like a very tall egg-shaped pokemon with a smaller egg in a pouch um very pink and bulbous uh comes around the corner uh, as Chansey, um, Nurse Joy's almost always companion, comes around the corner. Yeah, I'm shocked we made it in time. What on Do earth? I assume something made some other Pokemon mad. Um, I know we had a sunny forecast all week, and a lot of trainers were not expecting this. Normally oh, they wait till... Last. I don't know. Normally they'll wait till to check in to later in the day on the first day of the season, so... As of right now, it's just you guys, me, and two other people here. Everyone else is probably locked up in the gym or one of the trainer clubs that everyone's at. It's really unfortunate. I'm surprised more people aren't... Well, I guess I'm not. No battles have really taken place. Do you know how long the storm's gonna last? I, I just said I, I'm not sure. Um, I can check the storm radar, though. We have uh, an old one um, in the entertainment room. I can go. I can go look at that. Where are the other two people that are here? Um, I think one of them was, they were, uh, I think they were making use of one of the battlefields, and then another, I, th another one is up in their room. And there's like a, there's like a very, like, obvious distaste in Nurse Joy's face. It wasn't a crotchety old sea captain, was it? No, should I be expecting an old sea captain? No, no, no not necessarily. They didn't say they were going to stay here. Just, just curious. Okay. Um, well, uh, here, real quick, while we're here, I might as well check you in for the night. We don't know how long this is going to last. Okay. And you look over the clock, it's like 11 a.m., maybe. Yeah. This is yeah, we were, it was only 10 day. when we got to... Yeah. When we got um, to Goke. Uh, can I borrow each of your trainer cards very quickly? Yes. <laughs> you prevent a fresh, <laughs> yeah. You present a fresh trainer card, uh, and then the other two, um, Corinne, you having got yours a few weeks earlier, Seth, you having had yours for the last six months. Um, you guys, full, I need the full anime, like like the flourish with the two fingers. <laughs> One hundred percent viable. Um, putting them on the counter, Nurse Joy very quickly walks over to a small computer behind the counter and starts typing and swipes each of your trainer cards. She goes, okay, these are going to act as your room keys. I've given you three. I don't, are you traveling together? I, I'm sorry, Corinne, I've not met your friends. Who are they? Uh, oh, I'm, I, I Seth. just met my friends. This oh. is Seth, Seth Wake. and Gavin. I'm from Cerulean. Seth Wake? Oh, Cerulean. Um, and Gavin, you have a bit of an accent. Are you, are you new here? I'm Gavin Newman from the, from Sinnoh, and I'm going to be a Pokemon master. Sorry, I've got a weird energy. Yeah, it's, that's it's a lot of stuff well, going on. It's it's nice to see you young folks so excited about something. Um, but these are going to act as your room key. I've given you guys rooms on the second floor. But for now, why don't we make our way to the entertainment room? It's it's in the center of the building. I'm I'm a bit nervous about the windows right now. You never know what a hurricane's going to bring. Okay. Okay. Um, and she steps behind the counter. Chancy, do you mind watching the front desk and coming and getting me if anything if anyone comes in? Chancy. Um, the, the Pokemon adjusts a nurse's cap that is on top of its head, uh, and sits behind the desk, and you see there's a small, like, what looks like a floor mat, but there's, like, a button that Chansey presses with a foot, and it boom, cranks Chansey up to be, like, the right height for the, nice. for the desk. Nice. Um, and you guys, um, begin to walk, and as Nurse Joy takes you, she actually takes you through it looks like a, a nice sitting area with like a couple of TVs. Um, there are there are announcements and news playing on it. Nothing yet about a storm and palette, but you're seeing like the openings of gyms across the region. You're seeing people like speculating on new trainers. Um, there's a lot of that information going on. You don't see anything listing a natural disaster yet, and that's probably because of how quickly it's been sweeping in. It'll probably start getting covered relatively soon. Um. Walking through that sitting area, you go through what looks like a large cafeteria um, with a automated series of what looks like different machines that might give you a regular choice of foods. It looks like a toaster that'll distribute waffles, things that might distribute yogurt, things like that. 
um, eventually stepping through uh, a set of double doors, coming to an elevator, uh, and Nurse Joy takes you up the elevator to the second floor. You see down a hallway that there is a series of rooms um, that you can see up on the walls, and they kind of open out into a balcony that you can't see what the balcony looks down into right now. But what you do see is the other direction, there's a large black door labeled Entertainment Room Ask First on it. Um, and uh, you figure that's probably because they probably rent out the room to watch movies and such. Um, but as you guys turn the corner, you hear like the walking of quick footsteps. Uh, and who has, what are the sizes of your intelligence dies? D20. Nice. Uh, let's see. Does, any, does anyone have an equal to D20? Uh, no, yeah. I have a D8. Okay. D4. So, so with that, um, <laughs> um, but with that, uh, you will note, Gavin, that you hear the sound of quick footsteps coming up one of the halls, and you turn the corner and you see a person with like, um, with like very slight shoulders, uh, kind of rocking, um, what looks almost like more like black buckles and like like a tech streetwear kind of look with like an asymmetric hoodie that kind of like starts up here and like goes down to like midriff but then there's like a t-shirt underneath um uh they're rocking like bigger baggy pants that come in at the knee into like long socks that go down to a pair of like almost like doc martens s looking shoes uh they have like long red hair with like a with like a yellow strip across the top and they walk up and they kind of have like this like calmer demeanor uh nurse joy what's what's going on outside have you seen the weather um yes we were just coming in to check the weather radar um i can access the the channels here from the from the radar on top of the roof um did you want to come join us yeah why not um hi they look at each of you hello um, hey. hi i'm gavin neiman what's up I lean over the Korean. Nice Does he to meet you. do the full name every time? You think, or is that? <laughs> I I don't know. Okay. It's interesting. Vermilion, nice to meet you. Um, hi. And they just walk past you, um, and they walk into the room following Nurse Joy. Three of you are there for a second. If you yeah. want to say anything. So smooth. Yeah. I walk in. One or two is like judging looks, kind of yeah. like peer pressure you into the room. Um, once you walk in, you see a dimly lit room um, with like maybe like eight big cushy like two person chairs spread across it at different tiers with like a big projector. It's a very nice entertainment room. Um, and Nurse Joy walks to a computer at the back of the room and starts to click some buttons. She goes, uh, it should be getting up on the screen in just a moment and there. Uh, and she clicks a button and you are all immediately taken aback. As you see that, um, you, you're familiar enough with a map of the Kanto region at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, you're aware that there is, um, Pallet Town. Route 21, which is a slight river that eventually opens out into the ocean, and it continues on a route of the same name down to eventually Cinnabar Island, and you can take a route from Cinnabar to Seafoam. But for the most part, that's Kanto. There's open ocean to the south of Kanto. What you thought was a big storm that is slowly pushing over Pallet. <laughs> big is a small word. As you see that this storm stretches not only from the edge of Pallet Town over the edge of Route 21 heading into the ocean. The diameter of this storm starts past Pallet and ends past Cinnabar, encapsulating the entirety of Route 21 and moving north. Ooh. Holy It heck. is green and red on the weather radar. Oh. That's pretty severe. And does it show, and how fast is it moving? Looking at it, because it does this thing where it, it almost like scans every couple seconds and it's like a JPEG that changes every few seconds. It looks like it is spreading, but in a sort of weird and not, you know how storms always spread in sort of like a circular direction because they twist around a central point. This one spreads in weird bulges that's kind of like pushing its way up into the Kanto region. It doesn't, after it passes Pallet, it really seems to lose a lot of steam. 
it looks like it's mostly stationary, even though weird bits are cropping out and then being pushed back and creating this very odd asymmetrical storm. Well, that confirms it then. That's... Some Pokemon is causing that. Do you have an idea oh. what Pokemon? It would take... Well, there are rumors that when seven or eight Gyarados get together, their Dragon Rage could cause something like this, but not in all of my time in Palette have I seen anything like this. Seven or eight, though. That's... That's an entire school of Gyarados. Right. It seems like this is going to last some time. I guess we might as well be prepared for more individuals to show up. Hopefully people might try and make their way from... Ooh. Uh, and and um, Vermilion looks up, and they, they kind of look at um, Nurse Joy. Oh, most people are going to be in the Pokemon clubs right now. They're going to be wet and cramped. That's not a good feeling. I'm glad that we at least made it here. Yeah, is there anything we can do to help? Or, I mean, I don't know, Nurse Joy. Um, well, emergency services are mostly volunteer work here in Pallet. We've kind of expanded before we could really do too much in terms of our fire and rescue after um, a recent volunteer drive, some might say, given some history with our town you may have heard of. We're not really in charge of fire and rescue anymore. That's more of a private city business. The most we can do is help anyone who shows up. Well, it's our responsibility to help where we can. You hear, like, Vermilion, like, has already, like, pulled their, like, knees up against their chest in a chair and looks over you. I mean, yeah, but, like, you're, you're a little gung-ho. I need you to dial the energy back just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, totally. <clears throat> anyway, you guys Greenhorns? You guys new? Uh, yeah. I'm from uh, Cerulean, uh. but uh, probably this seems like it uh, from the answers you're getting. Uh, but no, I've I've been a trainer for some time, but I'm over from Cerulean. Mm. And you? Oh well, yeah, you know I've been uh, just a just a few. <clears throat> okay, yeah, all greenhorns. That's fine. Um, it's actually my second season, so you know, uh, if if you need any advice or anything. I guess we're going to be here for a while. Uh, uh, anyway, um, and as like Vermilion is like trying to think of like a plan, Nurse Joy's kind of staring at this screen. The screen goes dark. Oh no! Is that the Did power? The power? Yes, that would be the power. Luckily, luckily, we've just had our generators refilled. I just need to head um, downstairs to to fix the generators. Um. Oh, our generators. Uh, power most of our medical machinery um, but most of our other systems are going to go offline on the generators do you mind the th uh, the four of you um, we have space heaters on the third floor do you think you could bring them down here I think the entertainment room might be the best place to kind of hole up until everything's running back sure yeah you can do yeah, that sure. uh, Absolutely. I'll reach in my bag and grab a little <laughs> crank <Okay. laughs> uh, flashlight here um, and you see Nurse Joy kind of like reaches into like one of the pockets on her apron and pulls out a small like red card um, Corinne, you know where to go. And she hands you the card. Corinne, you know that on the third floor, there is the security office, and then in the security office, there is the maintenance closet where a lot of their leftover hardware is. Um, are you sure you don't want somebody to go down with you to help you with the generators? I'll take young Vermilion with me. Okay. Based off of the vibes that I was getting earlier when Nurse Joy had mentioned the one person that was here and then kind of distastefully the other person, I can assume that this is not the other this person. This is not the distasteful person. They go to power up the generators. You guys are headed to the third floor for the space heaters? Yes. 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 I guess we're taking the stairs. Oh, yeah. The elevators would be off right now until the generators turn on. Yeah. Corinne, you've spent enough volunteer hours here to know the layout pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, lift. Are all uh, Pokemon centers structured the same? They're not all the same, especially because this is one of the newest ones. Gotcha. Um, especially Cerulean being a legacy one. It's got, like, a lot of add-ons, and a lot of the cool stuff is in, like, wings. Yeah. But a lot of them have the same facilities. They all come from the same funding, which is league funding. Given that the biggest industry is Pokemon, Poke Centers are necessary. Um... Corinne, you lead them to, uh, behind the elevator, there's a staircase that leads up. Eventually, you guys get to the third floor. And you know that third floor is mostly um, the facilities that they couldn't fit downstairs. 
mm. a couple of extra rooms and like the security office and maintenance closet. It's a smaller floor than the second floor, which in turn is a smaller floor than the third floor. Nice. All right. Well, this way to the security room. You um, managed to walk your way down the hallway, eventually getting to the security office where you swipe the red card. And of course, it lets you through. And you open into a room with like 16 monitors um, and a chair that is mostly unused uh, because they don't need to actively monitor the Poké Center. Trainers, for the most part, there is a level of respect to the Poké Center from every trainer because everyone needs them to live, so they normally don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and inside, there's a maintenance closet where you're aware the space heaters and extra supplies may be. Um, as I walk over to the closet, can I glance at the monitors? Uh, they are off with the power off. Oh, what the? Yeah. All right. Luckily, there's enough natural light coming from the windows and things to make it to where you can see, even though it's very dim from the storm outside. Got it. You guys uh, think? Go ahead. The generators will power the waffle makers. You, uh, I mean, when did it, you get that? On the way up. Well, I guess it won't go bad because life finds a way. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> idiot! You're so stupid. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Well, if we can take these down quick enough, we might be able to join up with them uh, and see if they need any help with the generators. So, uh, mm. just grab what we can. Um, Fair enough. I'll bring out uh, Bowie to have him help carry some stuff. Okay. How big is this? The space heaters. Uh, the space heaters each are maybe like three foot by by like eight inches. Um, they're like the tall ones that have like the pipes going up through them. Mm. Uh, they use like coils to generate heat. These are gonna be heavy to get down the stairs. I think we'll be all right. You might be. <laughs> Opening up the uh, the closet itself, there is like the space heaters. There is like fire blankets there is emergency rations uh there's also like random equipment like a replacement waffle maker um extra chairs things like that um (laughs) but after you guys get about three of the space heaters out from the closet you hear and very small lights all appear in the ceiling not quite all of the room lights they're not all back on but emergency directional lights are all on Mm. And you guys see the monitors all pop back on. Oh, nice. power's back on a little bit, I guess. <sighs> Great. Does anything Is catch my Squirtle eye? big enough to sit on my shoulder, or small enough, rather? Small enough, absolutely. You saw how Bowie was sitting on Seth's shoulders. Squirtle can easily enough mirror. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Seth, yes, Seth, something does. As in the distance, you hear very, very distantly, Gen C! And then you look over at that monitor for just a moment, and you see four figures step into the Poké Center. Black clothes, black hats, black belts, and on their chests, adorning them, large blue R's. (gasps) And that's where we're going to end today's session. No! (laughs) No! No! No, because we're about to kick some ass. Don't fucking test me. So, with... That, thank you for joining us for the first ever episode of Unbeatable, the Indigo League. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed our uh, lovely players. Thank you, players, for playing all of your characters. Uh, Please come visit us for future episodes. We work very hard on these, uh, and it has been an endeavor. If you have any questions about, like, how our rules have worked, anything like that, add us on Twitter, all of our socials in the description below. But until next time, goodbye! Bye. Bye. I am unbeatable. I'll train until I meet my goal. If stakes are high, no, I won't fall because I am unbeatable. Earning every badge, whatever it takes, I'm gonna be the best trainer. You just wait, and I know the road ahead looks like it won't be. Standing by my side, got my friends with me to explore a whole world of possibilities. But no matter what the challenge is, we can overcome it together. Because we are unbeatable, we'll train until we meet our goal. The stakes are high, no, we won't fall because we are unbeatable. We are unbeatable, we'll train.
train until we meet our goal If stakes are high, no, we won't fall Because we are unbeatable